Hey everyone, and welcome back to Survival Live. I'm hoping that everyone's having a great day so far, and something I tend to notice is that a lot of people watch this on the replay, so to make the experience even better for you, I'm gonna make sure that we're instantly now starting and the stream is going. So how's everyone doing so far? Here we are, of course, in our mountain castle. If you've never watched this before, maybe you're a new viewer of my channel or even just of the live streams. Fundamentally, this is my live stream series. Um, I've done quite a few parts of this. I think this is, um, I don't know the exact part number, but we've definitely done a lot of these streams and there is a live stream playlist where you can check uh, which one this is and maybe see everything before it. Most of what I do on this world, I'd say like 95% is on the streams. Uh, so you can of course check that out and find out more about it. Anyway, something that I've been kind of thinking about in this world is how can we take it from where it is currently into something a much more late game and also a world that doesn't just kind of have random stuff around, but now that we've actually gotten all this treasure to use it to get ourselves upgraded. So one of the goals of today's Survival Live livestream is going to be to upgrade our stuff to hopefully all netherite and to get as many good enchantments as we possibly can. We also do now have a mending villager, so that's really great. Something we're probably going to do to start off with is basically take inventory of everything we have in terms of just our tools and armor and then see which ones can be upgraded and which ones we need more items for. The other really important thing we need to do coming soon is of course to get the supplies to go netherite mining. And again, hello to everyone in the chat, I see all these hello messages. Feel free during the entire live stream to send as many messages as you want during the chat and to try and ask me questions. I will try and answer as many as I see. And so thank you so much to everyone who is doing that right now. And we have hellos from all around the world. Maybe you have something interesting, put in the chat there uh, what country you're from maybe. That might be interesting to see where our viewers are from. I think my audio might be a little messed up. It is, it's at 100. Uh, what I tend to do for audio settings is I'll go 50% on everything, except for music is off and master volume is also 50%, which I guess would technically make it all be 25%. Someone asks if this is pre-recorded. It is not pre-recorded. Um, I always love answering that question because I think that uh, something that I can do, I guess, I'm sure many people can, but uh, something I tend to do on these streams is to sort of speak uh, as I would in the videos almost exactly. I do tend to be a little bit different, unfortunately, but I try my best. And so because of that, people do think that uh, it's pre-recorded, but it is not. And funny enough, I actually don't really sort of script my videos either. People think they're scripted, uh, but they're not. I do have sort of an outline, uh, but that's one of the reasons why I can do this is because I kind of have an outline that I'm working on with the videos. So I'm used to sort of creating what I'm saying on the spur of the moment. Anyway, very interesting. We have people from Malaysia, Finland, USA, uh, Kentucky, Lithuania, and Algeria, all around the world, I'm sure. Someone asks where I'm from. I am from Canada. All right, so in terms of our tools enchantments, our two pickaxes are almost perfect. Our fit fortune pickaxe does not have unbreaking though, so that's something we could take a look into, maybe an unbreaking villager. I don't think we actually have any unbreaking books inside of here. Also, um, tell me if the music is too loud. It seems too loud to me. That may be incorrect, though. I've been having some issues leveling that recently, so if the music is, like, the good volume, or if it's too loud or too quiet, uh, just tell me and I can try and adjust that early on in the stream. Here's another really cool thing we have, actually, and that is seven enchanted golden apples, and you can definitely thank ancient cities for those. And someone says it's a little bit loud, uh, not bad. What I'll do is I will just put that on 50%, and that should be... I'm going to say like that. Anyway, all right, there we go. That's probably better. And uh, someone says they're from South Africa. And someone says what happened to Pig Step? Well, it ended. The song ended. It's not that long of a song. I'm, I'm on 1.19.3 now. I did upgrade this world to that, and here's one of the only ways you can tell that. If you look at the scaffolding texture, and I'm sure that YouTube's compression is ruining any ability to do this, but the colors are slightly different to reflect the new bamboo textures. We don't have bamboo blocks in this world because it's not in 1.20, but the texture of the bamboo scaffolding was changed in 1.19.3 uh, to reflect more the texture of the new bamboo items. So that's kind of an interesting little fact there. Uh, anyway, 
I think what we'll do, because in terms of our enchantments on our tools, again, I think most things are decent. Um, maybe not everything is good enough to upgrade to netherite, but I would say most things are. Um, definitely our next big step is going to be to go ancient debris uh, hunting or mining, of course. We're not really hunting it. Um, but to do that, there are some things we're going to need to do first. Now, one of them is fire resistance. That's super important. Uh, but for now, we're going to start with a little bit of adventure by going out at night here and hunting some hostile mobs because we need creepers uh, for gunpowder, of course. We don't have a gunpowder farm yet. We should definitely make like one of these kind of easy multiple mob farms. Uh, these things are really, really simple to set up maybe take a bit of time but the actual design is quite simple uh, so that would definitely be a good idea long term to do that and if we're lucky like we were a while ago we actually were able to find ourselves some goat horns up here because funny enough of course if we're up here for a while and there's all these goats they might actually ram into some of these mobs and then hit a block by accident and drop their goat horns so anyway we have our four gunpowder there and there's another creeper here we're just going to fight creepers for a little while we don't need that many uh, we just have to be careful of course that they don't explode because that will ruin our goal of getting gunpowder from them our sword does not actually have knockback on it which does make fighting creepers a little bit more difficult but i'm not too worried about that so we're gonna go around here again keep looking for creepers the biggest issue i tend to find is not the creepers but having a very large number of mobs around us that makes fighting those specific creeper mobs to be more difficult and we have a super chat from Sweet Tea, and it is for $1. Thank you so much for the super chat. No message with that, but I absolutely appreciate the support. Every super chat, and even every chat message in general, is greatly appreciated. And of course, right there, that actually looked kind of interesting. It's like the arrows of the skeleton hit it. Um, it's because we weren't able to get away in time. So that tends to be the thing that is important. I should probably be looking at the screen, not reading the chat too much right now, since we are fighting a ton of creepers. Someone says they thought this was a tutorial. Well, I do try to make the live streams sort of watch like a large tutorial of mine would. And so if you ever just want to see a lot of videos of me sort of speaking about Minecraft in general, I would definitely suggest checking out my live stream playlists. And we always have to be careful doing this because although technically we could die in this world, it's not going to matter too much. It's not hardcore. Um, I don't think I've died in this world for a very long time. So we want to kind of maintain that sort of uh, streak there and see what we can do with that. Now, of course, we have here actually an interesting scenario. We could potentially get a music disc. In fact, we would have if that creeper had been a little bit more damaged, because of course the skeleton did hit the creeper. We're gonna go over here to these other creepers. Oh, there's a goat right there. You actually saw it jump. Uh, but anyway, we're gonna go over to these creepers here. We wanna be careful of this packed ice. This packed ice and standard ice is our real enemy up here, because it's definitely making it much more difficult to get away from those mobs in time. And someone says, I craft MC, do you know Undertale? I do know Undertale. I played that um, a long time ago, probably 2017 or something. Uh, I really enjoy that game. I've never played Delta Room, um, but I have played Undertale for sure. I guess, in fact, if there was really any game I'd play on like a second channel, I could see Delta Rune uh, being an option, maybe Undertale, I'm not sure. Uh, either way, what we're going to probably do is sleep, let those mobs despawn, and then come back just for the creepers because they wouldn't have burnt. So we'll go this way, and uh, you can see I've kind of lit up this pathway a little bit. Kind of keeps the snow off, but other than that, not too much. So we'll go over here, and then we're going to hope those creepers don't despawn, but the other mobs do burn in the sunlight to make this simpler. We already have 20 gunpowder, which is nice. And if we go over here, we can probably get ourselves another 12 to 20 gunpowder. Someone says they're at work and they're jealous they're not playing at the moment. Um, and they said they're disappointed that there won't be much in the 1.20 snapshots until 1.19.4 is released. I was interested by that. However, I have really great news for everyone watching. And this is one of the reasons why you want to follow me on Twitter. Um, at iCraft underscore MC. I would definitely recommend following me on Twitter. It's because something I'm talking about on there is actually one of the developers of Minecraft did leak... Uh, maybe not necessarily leak, but at least showed a really great preview of the Sniffer. And so the Sniffer is under kind of late stage development now, probably finalized textures, finalized behaviors, all these different things. And so because of that, 
um, you can actually see what the sniffer will very, very likely look like. And I'm assuming we might actually see a 1.20 snapshot coming out quite soon. Although, of course, Mojang doesn't tend to update two different things at the same time. I actually think this is going to be different now because something important to remember, oh, and here is a goat horn, like I was saying earlier, but something important to remember is that we don't really have snapshots anymore, um, as of course we have these sort of uh, versions of the game that are enabled with data packs, not with snapshots. So we could even potentially see throughout that 1.19 development, uh, 1.19.4 development that is, some sort of small data pack changes added in that can be enabled just by changing that data pack around. So I do actually think we will see some things soon, just maybe not quite as soon as we thought. And we may as well harvest our sugar cane here actually. This is an honestly pretty terrible sugarcane farm, and I kind of know why. It's because the water placement wasn't, well, it actually was done technically perfectly, uh, but it's not done in a very user-friendly way. So we'll collect that, though. That will help us in terms of it. Unfortunately, it looks like most of the creepers, if not all of them, did despawn. So probably would have been the best idea to stay there for a while longer. It's just always good to not be too risky, as of course we could have lost a lot of levels, and we're actually trying to enchant some things at this point. Now I did get the goat horn, let's see which one it is. It is feel. Let's listen to that goat horn sound. Okay, it's the low goat horn sound. I think it gets higher later? It does, there we go. That's always kind of interesting listening to all the different goat horns in Minecraft. I think my favorite fact about goat horns is the massive radius in which you can hear the goat horn sound. It's really funny to me because sometimes on multiplayer worlds, especially if I'm playing with some different friends that I'm on a voice call with, I'll sometimes use the goat horns to sort of be a pest because then everyone can hear them. As of course, there's like this weird sound radius thing where basically you can hear that goat horn from quite a large distance, sort of like when, let's say, someone spawns in the Ender Dragon or the Wither or defeats it, you can hear that all across the world with the Goat Horn. You can hear that in a, I think it's about 200 block radius, I forget the exact number, but it's quite a far distance. Alright, we now have over uh, one stack of fireworks, I was going to say over two stacks, but it's not quite that many. Still definitely enough for now. The next step is going to be to get magma cream, and again, welcome everyone to the stream who's just joined or is going to join soon, uh, although I guess you wouldn't hear this if you're going to join soon. Um, either way, in this stream we're going to be trying to upgrade our stuff, sort of just generally progress through the game a bit more, and then eventually do a bit more work on our base, maybe we'll see. Uh, but I hope everyone's having a great day so far, and maybe this stream will make it just a little bit better. We're looking, I shouldn't jump directly into fire, probably not the absolute best idea, but we are looking right now for one thing, and that is for magma cubes for magma cream. Now we need magma cream for a couple reasons, um, well actually just one reason, and that's for fire resistance potions. And so there are a couple ways you can get magma cream, however the uh, basically the easiest way is the basalt delta. So we are going to look for that. You know, something you can do is actually take four magma creams, which are sort of like the magma cube slime balls, and craft them into one magma block, but you cannot turn the magma blocks into magma cream. I wish that recipe was reversed, kind of, in some ways, because then this big field of magma down here would fundamentally mean unlimited fire resistance potions. I don't really know where the nearest basalt delta is here, I haven't actually checked. So uh, we could just kind of fly around to look for it, or we could maybe do a bit more sort of exploration here. I do see, of course, we have the Soul Sand Valley. I'll probably just fly in one direction and then go back that same area a little later. I don't actually know exactly where we're kind of going. I'm just going to look around for anything. And hey, if we find like something really great, we can take a look for that. Uh, now, actually, we have here a large magma cream. However, we have no gold on, so we have to be careful of these piglins hitting them before they get in the radius where they can hit us. Unfortunately, it looks like that magma cream has chumped in the lava, which always makes it so much more difficult to deal with. So we're going to go over here, and we are going to try and uh, lure that magma cube over to us. Again, we have no fire resistance, so we have to be very, very careful what we're doing. Although we do have swift sneak, which makes this a little bit uh, kind of easier in some ways, but also kind of more risky. All right, we're going to let that magma cube get a little closer, and then we can hopefully uh, get some magma cream out of it if it kind of very slowly bounces towards us. Let's go this way. 
Someone says, can I possibly do a tutorial on the best way to farm mobs in the nether, for example, blazes? Um, they always need blaze rods, but lose so much durability and food fighting them. Uh, that is definitely a good idea. I think I did do a general nether tutorial maybe about six months ago. So there's nothing wrong, of course, with that tutorial, but it does not necessarily recommend, let's say, like an efficient blaze spawner farm setup. Uh, something you will probably be seeing a lot more from my channel in the future is farm tutorials, just because I haven't really covered them and so because of that there's a lot more to do that I haven't done already uh, so it is somewhat likely uh, that you will see something like that in the future and thank you so much for that suggestion and also good luck of course setting up your spawner looks like that blaze not the blaze it looks like the magma cube wants to be on that size side of the uh, my words are perfect today but they want to be on that side of the uh, lake here so we're gonna probably have to travel over something very careful uh, something really important to be careful of that is is that on the soul sand you're a little bit lower and it's kind of strange but you can notice it right here it's like we're kind of bumping up a bit there because we're going a little bit lower uh, on this soul sand block and so because of that fact we have to be careful uh, that we do not hurt ourselves uh, because you can sometimes kind of go over an inch and then get some lava there so we can have that be an issue just in fact literally like I should right there you can see you can sometimes go over the edge get burned unfortunately it is kind of an issue so we're gonna let ourselves heal up a little bit here then we're gonna go over to this uh, magma cube which is unfortunately not being very easy for us you can see we can at least bridge over very very quickly with our uh, swift sneak here finally we have that in range now if I had a bow I could shoot it a bit to get it down somewhat but I kind of want to lure it over this way and to an area where if it's actually hurt it's not going to have everything it drops just go in lava because that's uh, not really beneficial to us at all so we're going to go over here uh, someone says, what's the difference between netherite and diamond armor? Uh, well, in terms of, of course, the things it gives you, and I just went in lava yet again, unfortunately, because Zulsan does tend to do that. Um, but in terms of that disc, the difference between netherite and diamond armor, uh, fundamentally, netherite armor does give you uh, more durability and also more protection in general, but there's also this knockback protection effect, which is really important for PvP, and as well as that, there's the fact that it will give you more fire protection. So overall, netherite armor is worth it. Of course, one of the biggest things is that you cannot actually have your uh, tools. This <laughs> this uh, magma cube here is very stuck. But you cannot really have your tools um, burn in lava if they are a netherite, because of course netherite is immune to lava. Now we're gonna be careful here because again, we don't want these. Uh, magma creams here to fall into the lava. I think we have fortune on this sword. In fact, I know we do. And so we have to be kind of careful about that. Something that some people may not know is that the baby magma cubes uh, will not actually, uh, well, they actually can hurt you. So unlike the baby slimes, baby slimes cannot hurt you, but maybe baby magma cubes can. I'm not sure if it's on purpose or not because they're so small, but because of that, it's definitely something to be aware of. All right, so we got that one magma cube there and we're going to uh, level ourselves up a little bit here in terms of our health and we're going to fly back up i believe this way goes back now how much do we have we have five magma cream i don't really think that's enough to be honest and our durability is still pretty good so i'm probably going to do a quick fly around and we're going to try and find another magma cube hopefully in a basalt delta as basalt deltas are very large uh, sources of the magma cream as of course you can get them from the massive amounts of magma cubes that tend to spawn there all right, this just kind of leads into Crimson Forest, which although is a nice biome, is not what we want. And actually something kind of good about flying around like this through the nether, and there's our basalt delta, by the way, uh, is that you can sometimes find bastions as well as other nether fortresses through it. Both of them being a great source of loot. This is a very uh, valuable sort of thing to do is to go through here. Now, we're gonna have to be very careful. In fact, we just got the achievement, Hot Tourist Destinations, which does give you experience. Interesting fact, some high-level advancements do give you experience. So we got that right there. And we can now look around this uh, hot tourist destination, as they said, and take a look for that. I, I really love the generation, actually, of the Basalt Delta. And with sort of the lava pools cascading down into each other, absolutely a beautiful biome. There definitely are some nether-related topics I haven't covered a whole lot in my videos, so um, I wouldn't doubt it if you happen to see some of those in the future. And actually, this is great, because this t tends to be really close to where we were before, which is going to make this so much easier in the future to get back. Now, let's get this gas out of the way. There we go. We just kind of hit its gas ball right back there. 
I'm not sure if the fortune counted because we hit it with the sword, because we didn't really kill it with the sword. I don't think so. But we'll kill this one with our sword, uh, just like that. And you can see that kind of fell down, and I think they just landed in lava, unfortunately. So uh, we have that, but no. There we go. Anyway, we'll go back to that basalt delta. We've now used up some fireworks already. So you can see why we got some other ones earlier. And we'll look for the uh, magma cream, magma cubes here. Um, sort of certain words in Minecraft like magma cream, magma cube. Very similar to each other, but we'll go this way. And in fact, there are some in the lava right there. So we'll get those in a second. This is somewhat dangerous. And um, uh, we have a super chat from Sweet Tea that says, End something you say with A, please. Love your commentary. <laughs> I know I am Canadian, so some people will sort of want me to end some of my sentences with A, I guess. Um, and I can try and do that. So I guess sort of... Uh, some people don't really know what A means in sort of Canadian lingo. And, you know, I hear it on TV a lot. Like, just, you know, kind of... I don't really watch TV, but in terms of pop culture and movie, that was a very interesting uh, um, um, background sound, by the way. But anyway, uh, so I hear it sort of in, in TV more than anything, but basically it just means, do you agree with that? So I could be like, this is a really cool biome, eh? Sort of like that. That would be, I guess, the correct way of saying it. Um, so there you go. Now, we're going to see if we can get this magma cube onto the ground here because it's going to be so much better to us if it can, and I don't think it can. Uh, we might have to break a way up for it. No, that might work. Let's find out. Oh yeah, there we go. Now, these things are pretty dangerous, actually. They don't look dangerous, but they actually are. We also have a uh, ghast in the background, of course. So we're going to try and get these ones and get the magma uh, cream there before they fall. And that one just turned, of course. It's kind of funny that something they can survive in the lava. Its items would burn in the lava, but that is the way it works. So we have that. Now we're going to walk over here to the other one. We now have eight magma cream. Almost enough. But again, having to be very careful, this is like a really, really great time to die in this world. Is because, you know, we're flying around, no fire resistance, very close to lava lakes. We have to be super, super careful about that. Uh, just because there's this high sense of danger. So... Uh, we have this magma cream here. We'll kind of land right there and we'll make our way over in the safest way we possibly can. Let's see if we can get this one to sort of be attracted to us. Mobs tend to sort of follow you and I believe that the magma cubes actually don't uh, follow you if they can't see you directly. Like they don't have very good AI. I think this is on purpose but it's an interesting fact about them just the way they work. Now we're going to try and get this down a bit, and can we now have these smaller ones? These are like some of the best ones to kind of get that magma cream from, and we are in lava, and we're going to fly out. There we go. <laughs> that is not good. There's another magma cube up here, so that is not the best. <laughs> we're going to uh, be very careful here because this is uh, not an ideal situation. We're actually going to mine into this wall here and block ourselves in. Very, very good to block yourself in, and we survived. Now, of course, like I said earlier, I kind of was aware that was a dangerous situation. That is generally what you want to do in something like that. Now, something I would probably do too, and sometimes I'd recommend this if you really just do not like dying in your world, is you can uh, exit the game, save it, make a backup, and then you can kind of try multiple times to, to save yourself in a scenario. But I want this to be quite a legitimate world. I have no idea what I would do if I actually had died there. Um, we've had some very close calls on sort of this life of this world. Um, I know in general we've died like two or three times in the world, but they were a long time ago. This up here is actually a much better place to fight the magma cubes anyway, so kind of a win-win situation if you think about it. And then, you know, uh, we, we have that, so we will get these baby magma cubes here just because they're annoying. Now, there's another big one up here. Uh, big magma cubes can also kill you very, very quickly because of this sort of fact where there's like no damage cooldown timer. So you have to be super careful about that. Uh, because again, if they kind of get you like pinned up against a wall, you can get hurt really quickly. And I don't actually think the baby magma cubes drop the slime balls. I think it's the opposite of the um, the opposite of the slimes, where the slimes, like the smallest ones, will drop the slime balls. But with these ones, it's the biggest ones that do. Anyway, we're gonna go over here and get this one. 
Um, and we will probably stop there. I think this is the biggest one. We can then go back and, of course, make our fire resistance potions. Uh, slimes can turn up in up to four slimes of the smaller size when you hit them. So that'd be either, you know, slimes or the, the uh, magma cubes because they function pretty similarly. And so like right there, each one of those split into uh, four. And so then you could technically get like 16 baby slimes from one of the big slimes. Now, kind of our more challenging thing we have to deal with is obviously uh, getting back to our base. And so because of that, uh, we're gonna look at our coordinates here. I'm assuming the way back is gonna be kind of whatever way gets us closest to zero, zero. So we're gonna do that in just a second here. And someone says, why am I trying to make fire resistance potions? Well, that's a great question. I'm trying to make fire resistance potions because fire resistance potions are something we need to go netherite mining. And we're gonna do some netherite mining a little bit later in this uh, live stream and so because we don't want to of course die when we're night mining netherite uh, we're going to be using that now i think this is the way back to our main portal it is um well i guess not technically our main portal now that we sort of have like two base areas if you haven't been watching this series we've been looking at different areas and and we'll go over here now someone says uh, the early live stream I did where I died by falling is their favorite. I think that was the one where I fell into like a cave nearby here. I could probably find the cave actually in a second. Um, but just to be extra risky because why not? Uh, we're going to go and hunt some more creepers um, because we kind of uh, need a little bit more uh, fireworks. So we're going to go over there, try and find a couple of those. Um, I know it's sort of when you're dedicating like lots of time to fighting creepers, it's probably the time in the game to make a general mob farm, which again, we will do soon at some point. Uh, but for now, we'll have a little bit of adventure here. We're going to hunt these creepers as we, I think there's like the credits music in the background. I just have uh, every single Minecraft song that can kind of play through there. Um, something kind of annoying actually that happened a little while ago is that one of the songs I was playing on a stream got a copyright strike. It was a Minecraft song. It was just sort of like a strike because I think someone else had used samples from the same song. And so like they were kind of copyright claiming the other song, even though that wasn't the song that I was playing. Because of course all the Minecraft music is not copyrighted in the sense that you can't use it. Because of course then how could people play through the game, right? Uh, that would uh, be naturally in playthroughs. And so either way, um, I had that happen, and so like some random music company took like all the revenue from like one of my streams, which is just like super random. Uh, but thankfully I just removed that song. I forget which one it is, I think it was one of like the original survival songs, like um, sort of like one of the ones you might hear in like a very very old Minecraft video from 2012. Uh, so definitely like one of those, but either way, I haven't had really any issues since then, and so that's a good thing for sure. Uh, we already have, how much is that? Oh, we just fell down a hole here. We're probably going to fly up. Always good to stay in a very versatile area. That's really important to not dying. If you get stuck, that's like the first step to dying. And I've seen so many deaths across so many Minecraft videos. I've probably watched thousands of hours of Minecraft videos, um, as I'm sure a lot of people here have done as well. And something I noticed in a lot of them is that one of the biggest ways that people die is they'll get trapped. Then let's say creepers or skeletons will gang up on them. That's how they die. It's not necessarily from the creepers and skeletons alone. It's from getting stuck in situations they can't get out of. So for instance, this situation right here was a perfect example. I couldn't walk right off the cliff here. So because of that, I had to go to the side, which was unideal. And then of course, because of that, one of those mobs exploded. So always be sure when you're fighting mobs, you have a lot of room around you that you can kind of move as that's going to really make you a lot safer. We're going to go over here and actually get maybe these skeletons first. I think one of those skeletons actually hit one of the goats. So um, unfortunately for that goat, it just got caught in the crossfire there. And that creeper dropped no gunpowder, which is actually fairly rare because we do have looting three on us. A big thing to always keep up on that hunger, whether or not you're eating, you know, the perfect foods or not, always be careful. And because of that stupid lag spike, there wasn't able to hit the creeper in time. Uh, but either way, we'll get that creeper. There we go. And uh, I do not have Optifine on right now, anything like that, unfortunately, because I actually couldn't find a version of it for 1.19.3 that worked um, with the fabric, which is what I have for this other mod. Anyway, we're going to get this, um, but this is a vanilla playthrough. I just have this thing called Replay Mod on, which I use for making videos, uh, but not for making the stream here. Now we're going to go back. Um, again, I think this spider might have just turned passive on us, but we don't care. We're going to get it anyway. A death to all spiders. And we'll go over here and, of course, 
uh, kind of unload ourselves from all these items. Now, I'm thinking it's just about time to get the rest of our supplies together. A big question you might have is what am I actually going to be doing in terms of the uh, method of getting netherite? And that's going to be just the strip mining method. The bed method is good, uh, but it's not actually perfect and we don't really have a good source of wool, so it's not the perfect method for us at all. And we'll go over here. And Mariah Riley says, please, can you notice me? I would love to have a shout out from my favorite YouTuber. Well, there's your shout out, Maria Riley. And we're going to go over here, uh, just throw away some of these basic, I guess not throw away, but you know, place in this chest some basic items. I guess that's like the beauty of an automatic sorting system. One of the reasons why people love it so much is you can just throw things in a chest, not have to worry about it. And you still get the good results of things coming out sorted eventually. All right, we're going to take this glass, craft some bottles, and let's get to fire resistance potion making. All right, there are nine glass bottles. We'll fill it up here, and we'll fill up these two brewing stands with the bottles. Uh, I'm sure most people watching this are very aware of it, um, but of course, the way that you do make the good fire resistance potions is you start with nether wart, then a magma cream, and then end it off with a redstone dust. The Netherwort will of course turn this into an awkward potion, the magma cream will turn that awkward potion into a fire resistance potion, and the redstone dust is basically a free way of turning that fire resistance duration from 3 minutes to 8 minutes, which is great. And someone asks, can goats spawn with only one horn? Now, they can spawn with only one horn, but usually when you see a goat that has two horns, that's because it knocked one of the horns off from uh, ramming into another mob, like what Sarah Billy Goat we have right here, it's trapped because then it can't ram anything. It's actually just trapped so it doesn't walk away on us and jump over the wall or maybe jump down there and uh, unfortunately die of fall damage. Um, but they can definitely spawn in multiple ways, but again, generally when you see them with one horn or no horns, that's definitely because they knock those horns off. So if you've been to an area recently and you see a goat with only one horn, absolutely worth your time to take a look around, see if you can find that other goat horn. All right, looks like these have now turned into those eight minutes potions of fire resistance. We're going to make one more batch of them because that would be probably the best thing to do. We're also out of bottles then anyway, so it's easier. And we're going to do that. And again, if at any point during the live stream you want to ask me any questions about Minecraft, feel free to ask them. I do try and check the chat as much as I can. Then I can respond to your questions and you can maybe learn more about the game while also watching me play the game. And you can see we got a great haul of magma creams, by the way, from a little bit earlier. Almost half a stack of magma creams, which is great. And that's really good. Someone says, why don't you use splash potions? That's a good question. Um, the answer is pretty simple. It's the fact that we're going to be actively drinking these fire resistance potions. We're not using them as emergency fire resistance potions. However, if you are using fire resistance potions in terms of, let's say, not using it, but just having one in your inventory in case you fall in lava, then to throw it and save yourself, you do want to use splash potions of fire resistance in that scenario. But in this scenario, because we're going to be actively drinking them. If you don't throw the splash potion of fire resistance just right, you can actually have an issue where basically you won't get 100% of that effect's duration. So that's the answer as to why we're using standard potions of fire resistance, not the splash potions of fire resistance. Someone says, can they also join? Well, this is not a server, unfortunately, so no. However, I do have an SMP, and on the pinned chat there, and also in the description of this video, is a link to my Discord. And on that Discord, then you can join play.icraftmc.com and do that. And speaking of that, feel free to check out my social medias. I have on Twitter at iCraft underscore MC. I've been commenting lately on the new sniffer design there. I would take a look at that. Also, of course, the Discord, as I mentioned earlier. On Twitch, we have at, well, we just have at iCraft MC on Twitch there. And of Reddit, we have r slash iCraft MC. And I think that's a really funny subreddit. Um, definitely check that out. We got some great posts on there and feel free to post uh, whatever you'd like having to do with my channel or Minecraft on that subreddit. So anyway, back to the game here. And we now have a ton of fire resistance potions. 
and we'll put our extra gunpowder probably away actually. We might craft some of it, but keeping a supply sort of saved for brewing is probably also a very good idea. And we're going to go over here, get that put away. Uh, potentially we could do a thing where you kind of switch out your tools for worse tools. This then protects it so if you do die in lava it's not as much of an issue. I'm not so worried about that so I'm probably not going to do that. However what we are going to do is we are going to get some shulker boxes to make our storage, or not our storage, but sort of our ability to transport items be much better when we're mining that netherite. Let's get some... Ah, uh, chests, and we'll get some chests, and we'll use those chests to craft ourselves some more shulker boxes. Uh, just out some of the wood here, doesn't really matter what type, of course, as there are not yet wood-specific chest types. But something does make me think in the future we will see that. Um, in fact, I'd be pretty shocked if we didn't. I'm going to do this. Someone says, will I ever do a Bedrock Edition Let's Play? Well, I think that it is possible. I could technically, there's nothing stopping me from doing that. I could technically do that at any point. Um, however, in terms of doing one like right now, of course, that's not going to happen. Um, but for sure, we do have uh, the possibility of doing that. If you want to watch me playing Bedrock Edition, almost in a bit of a Let's Play format, I do a video of basically the first time I seriously played Bedrock Edition. And that's on my channel, just look up iCraft MC Bedrock Edition, it should come up as one of the first results there. Alright, we now have three shulker boxes, uh, we could even make more, but I think three is enough, and we'll put that away. Then we can put our safety supplies in here, we have uh, eight minutes per potion, so eight, 16, 24, 32, 40, 48, and then that would be 56, 64 minutes, which is like over an hour. And then of course, we have four more, which would give us another 32 minutes so that gives us a stack and a half of minutes there we go there's our sort of minecraft minutes and we'll go over here get the rest of that uh, picked up i think that's about it in terms of anything else you need when mining netherite not a whole lot in terms of this method mostly just lots of really good pickaxe durability fire resistance and yeah, I mean, that's fundamentally it. So we're going to go back to the nether here and we're actually going to mine for some nether, right? Hopefully we get lucky. If we don't, we don't. We're going to find out though. And we have a super chat from Delford uh, Hesner. Hopefully I said that right. I probably did not. For $5 and it says you should make a second channel where you read bedtime stories. <laughs> well, I could do that. I've had some people uh, tell me I should maybe um, read audiobooks or something like that. And I guess I could sort of see that happening. A lot of people do like the way I speak. Um, which I find interesting because I never remember at any point sort of before I was a YouTuber people mentioning the way I speak at all um, but it seems like just sort of the way I present things on YouTube people do tend to enjoy that so I'm really glad that uh, you enjoy that too and I'll definitely keep that in mind if I'm ever looking for second channels to create um, as there are quite a few other things people have asked me to do like let's say making um, videos on other video games uh, or maybe even just doing things with like a long form let's play on a second channel so all those things are possible in the future i suppose someone says what is my favorite food uh, that's a good question i'm not sure of course i like all like the basics you know like let's say uh, pizza and burgers and all these things um, but there's a lot of foods that I've had kind of more rarely that are also good. So I'm not sure if I have a favorite food or not, but of course some of my favorite foods I guess would just be kind of exactly what you'd expect most people to enjoy. Um, but yeah. Alright, we're going to uh, go find an area that's kind of lava free, and actually we're going to drink this fire resistance first. Very important to get that fire resistance as soon as possible. I'm pretty sure this gravel is not on top of lava, although it's next to lava, because if it was on top of lava, if we broke this block, the whole thing would fall down, and it didn't just fall down, so because of that, I can figure out the fact that this is a good place to start a netherite mine from. Now why do I say that? Because sometimes when mining netherite you will mine right into lava. Again we do have fire resistance, super important when doing this kind of thing. What I probably should have grabbed is uh, night vision as well so you guys can see this better but hopefully it won't be too bad. We're gonna go down here and take a look for that netherite. Now we are gonna turn on chunk borders, this is done in Java by pressing F3 and uh, G on your keyboard so that uh, shows and hide chunk board or I can just like spam it like this <laughs> but we're not going to do that and so we can go down here you can't really see a difference for now because we haven't hit a chunk border 
we will hit a chunk border soon. This also gives us a good source of the quartz and everything else to like get us experience and things. There's a chunk border, by the way. Okay, this is a bit low actually, so we're at Y level eight. We want to be at Y level uh, 14 and 15 being exposed. So we're gonna go over here and get up to the point where we have those two levels be there. So you can notice this is Y level 14. This is Y level 15 and sorry for the big coordinate screen, but anyway. If I also turn, uh, let's see here, if we go to particles and turn those off, will that make those particles stop coming off me? It does. So that's hopefully going to make that compression for people on YouTube a little bit uh, better. And I guess, well, everyone's watching on YouTube. <laughs> so that's better for everyone. Um, this is Blackstone, which is not what we want to run into, actually. But we're going to, basically what we're going to do is we're going to mine along these chunk borders. And it's just what we're doing right now. It's pretty simple. Just sort of mine along chunk borders. Um, hope to find stuff. Is this a fortune shovel? It is not. But we're getting a huge drop rate of gravel there, which is quite interesting. Uh, generally, 1 in 10 gravel blocks gives us a piece of flint. But for us, it was much more than 1 in 10, about 1 in 5. So, not sure what that's about. But anyway, we're just going to mine like this. Again, no real issues because we do not have uh, the issue of burning in lava because we do have fire resistance. One issue we could run into is getting lost. Definitely an overlooked issue, to be honest. So we're going to be careful to not kind of run into anything too dangerous. Uh, but either way, very, very easy. Just mine through it like this and sort of try and uncover some netherite. And having a good shovel is a good idea as well. Kind of breaks up some of those other blocks you run into. Um, but overall, doesn't matter too much. Eventually, though, of course, less blackstone and things like this would be good. So let's keep mining wherever it's easy. Hopefully find ourselves some of that. There's some lava actually. A bit low, though. Someone says, what is my favorite song? Uh, I actually do know this one. It is Sin Coal Feel Good. Uh, it's one of those uh, no copyright sound songs. It's kind of cl uh, kind of cliche meme song, but um, I really like it, actually. I've liked it for probably two and a half years, maybe. Uh, it's one of those things where, like, you know, I've had... Uh, I really like electronic music, EDM, things like that. Uh, people are sometimes surprised by that. That just is what I like, so there, there it is. And, uh, yeah, Sin Coal Feel Good. Um, is one of my favorite songs. Something I really like too, it's kind of an interesting thing I've been experimenting with a while, uh, for a while, is slowing down songs. So like a lot of really cool songs sound good, then if you actually slow them down by about 20%, so like that would be 80% total speed, um, it can also make them sound just completely new and like in a different pitch. So that's always been something I find kind of interesting is that. Uh, but anyway, we're going to keep mining through here. We've not found any netherite so far, which is not shocking because these methods tend to become a lot more viable the longer they're done for, as it then takes that random chance and spreads it over a long duration of time. Because if you take anything that's a rare random chance, and if you spread it over a long period of time, that then makes that random chance much more regular, as it's then regulated over a long uh, sort of amount of samples. And if none of that made any sense, it doesn't need to. Uh, but what does make sense is if you've been mining for diamonds for 10 minutes and you don't find any, but technically you should find, let's say for an example, two diamonds in hour or two diamonds per 10 minutes let's say on average uh, then you'll have a much higher chance of finding those two diamonds on in for 10 minutes if you mine for longer than 10 minutes because that might actually mean let's say finding 10 diamonds every 50 minutes at uh, just average to two diamonds every 10 minutes all right we've now run out of inventory room in fact we did quite a while ago to be honest i have no real desire to save these random items on us and i even kind of forgot to clear out our inventory before we went here I will clear it out a little bit here, save some of these things. Not super important. We may as well keep those on us. And we're going to go over here and then mine out this area as well. Uh, to sort of, again, try and find more of the netherite. Just something we're checking again, the right level. You, something you can also do is go over this. So you now someone says, do it, does that mean that if you gamble for a long time, it increases the chances of winning? Um, that's not really what I mean at all. What I mean, of course, is that... Um, with something like mining, and actually there's some ancient debris right there. Uh, with things like mining, of course, um, it's just kind of a random chance thing it's uh, based on. Uh, but of course, with something like gambling, I would never suggest people to, to to waste their money on things like that. So that is definitely not something I'm suggesting at all. Although, of course, technically anything that's chance-based, you will have a higher chance of getting... Um, a good result if you do something for a long time because of course it's like you have more chances of succeeding uh, just like with anything if you you know um, let's say go to the gym more times you're just gonna get a better result out of that than if you uh, go to the gym once a year 
Now we're going to keep mining around like this. This is another good trick. This is sort of like a interesting way of mining out tunnels alongside. It um, doesn't always work perfectly, but it can work fairly well because it does tend to expose a lot of blocks at once. So we're going to do that. We've already found those two ancient debris, which is pretty good. Um, netherite mining does tend to become kind of boring at a certain stage. Uh, so I'm hoping we can kind of vary up the methods we're using to try and find a huge amount of that. And someone says I remind them of one of their friends. That's so weird. Maybe I am that friend, and you'll never know. You should ask that. You should not ask that friend. <laughs> oh boy, I sometimes wonder that when I like see people on the street. It's like I wonder if they've watched one of my videos because I've had like 48 million. No, that's not it. Maybe it is. I think it's something like 48 million total views. It's quite a high number. And I was thinking, I mean, the chance that I've seen someone, you know, just on the street or whatever that's watched one of my videos is not a small chance, really. So it's like, you know, they'd never know, though. But it's quite funny that that's sort of possible. And we have a super chat from Kai Nico for $10. And it says, you're just so interesting uh, and satisfying to watch and listen to. Well, I'm uh, very thankful that you think that, and I will try to make these streams as interesting as possible. Um, I, I find I tend to find a lot of things to be interesting. You know, many people get really easily bored by things, but for me, I like interest. I sort of like listening to many things. You know, I like I know a lot of people, for example, here. You know, a lot of people. Okay, we just ran into a lava lake, and our fire resistance is almost out. Um, but a lot of people don't sort of like listening to, let's say, when old people tell stories, it can be boring, it's annoying, things like that. But I actually tend to listen to that, and I find that really interesting because, you know, getting glimpses into other times is really like the closest thing to a time machine we have, and hearing about kind of the past and future of other people can really tell you a lot about the past and future of yourself. So I always would recommend to people to listen to um, really all sides of issues and to really try and learn as much as you can, because I just find that personally interesting but it's also quite a healthy thing to do but i'm not going to turn this entire stream into uh life lessons with icraft mc we're just going to mine netherite here and we have mined some more we now have five ancient debris so we're going to go through here and get ourselves a whole lot more of these blocks mined out and again we did find some more on our main pathway there we're running into gravel which is kind of an issue here and we'll go over here and get that. Of course, sort of the big thing that people tend to do with this is not picking up that netherrack. We're not going to pick up the netherrack either, um, but we could, technically. And so we're going to go over here. We might pick up the blackstone, actually. I do like blackstone as a building block. Uh, definitely a better building block than netherrack, I'll say that much. And we'll go over this way. And I think I actually missed, yes, that someone became a member. So thank you to Mars Mac Ready for becoming part of the Ice Squad. I've not mentioned that this stream, uh, but I do have this membership program. It's mostly for these live streams. It tends to make them better. Um, and if you join that, of course, then you can have access to all kinds of things, including the VIP section on my Discord, uh, also emotes on the channel for comments, and also the super chat. And as well as that, there's sometimes these exclusive community posts where you can kind of talk to other iCraft MC fans more directly. We also have another super chat. And it says, if Minecraft were real and you could be any mob, not the player, what mob would you be? P.S. Thanks for the video. So clear, so helpful. Good vibes. Well, I'm so glad you like the videos. And in terms of any mob I could pick, I think that's actually a really simple uh, question because it would fundamentally have to be the Enderman. The reason why is that the Enderman is the only mob in the game that can pick up and place down again blocks. Of course, certain blo uh, mobs like the Wither, let's say, can explode different items. But I feel like the Enderman is really the only sort of humanoid and actually could be interesting past about five minutes of existing as that sort of creature, as it does have the ability of being creative, placing things around, doing stuff. It can't pick up every block, but I'm assuming if I was sort of one of those mobs for a while that I could kind of at least pick up the items that the Enderman usually can and use those. And so that is definitely uh, the mob I would pick is being an Enderman. We'll go this way. Now someone says, uh, does anyone else watch my videos when trying to sleep? Uh, not because I'm boring, but simply because my voice is soothing. <laughs> I've actually heard a lot of people in my comments say that. And you know, even if it is because I'm boring, um, I'm not necessarily offended by that if people find that I'm boring. Uh, but I do find it interesting because there are many people that have said I could kind of make an ASMR channel. I could do different things like that. Uh, I could see that 
sort of in a way, <laughs> which is funny. Uh, but no matter what people think, I'm glad that people watch my videos in general. And, you know, something I've been thinking about a lot, as of course we are still kind of in the beginning of 2023. Um, I know the month of January is actually closer to being over than it is started, uh, but still, of course, it is... Uh, kind of the beginning of the new year still and it's just crazy to think how far my channel went last year how far it's gone this year too you know i think this year alone we've gained tens of thousands of subs i'm um, of course now past 300,000 subscribers and by the way thank you to everyone for that who's been a fan and who just watched um, i really appreciate that if for some reason you're watching this right now and you're not subscribed feel free to subscribe because uh, there's always lots more where this comes from with live streams usually every week um, not always, uh, but usually, and then also at least two to three videos a week as well. Now we're going to go over here. Uh, here's a really kind of big debate in terms of the netherite mining um, Minecraft community, and that is whether or not to mine the quartz and the gold, or just to leave it. And it is a really good question, because if you think about it, and... Um, sort of wonder uh, what's better, you know, you're going to lose efficiency if you're just mining these. However, here's a great trick. Someone actually uh, commented on one of my videos a long time ago, and it is if you put your pickaxe in your offhand that you've been mining with, and then mine that quartz, you're going to heal that pickaxe in your offhand. So you can use these random ores that you found and have them to basically turn into experience, uh, and then of course from experience into durability on your pickaxe. And we also have another super chat. And it says, hey, I craft MC, have you ever, has there ever been a moment where your, your Bob Ross-like charisma turns off and you go full uh, Alex Jones? <laughs> well, um, I'm, <laughs> I'm not sure. That's kind of a funny thing. Uh, probably not. I tend to act pretty serious and, and kind of... Um, uh, I'm not sure what the right word is, but sort of not, um, you know, completely... Uh, crazy when um i do get mad at things it's not super often that i'm getting incredibly frustrated or mad about something um, but if i am i'll tend to just address it very seriously i do have a more serious tone i suppose but uh, definitely you know i don't really have a uh, a sort of crazy meltdown like it's actually kind of difficult for me to even imagine myself having like a crazy meltdown uh, but speaking of, um, well, actually not really speaking of anything, but we just found some more netherite, which is awesome, and it's a three vein, and we've been uh, kind of unlucky in terms of finding netherite. Uh, we have been lucky in terms of the ore sizes, as three is the biggest size, and we have now found two three ores and one two ore, which of course gives us the total of eight ancient debris. We need four ancient debris to give us one piece of netherite, or one netherite ingot, that is. And of course, one netherite ingot will give us one netherite tool. So we now have two netherite tools worth of ancient debris, which I think is pretty good. So we have that, of course. And then with that, we can then uh, continue on to get more and more tools, which is like that. Now we're going to go this way. Now, someone says, uh, what is my favorite Minecraft update? Theirs is probably 1.16, as it was the first update they were anticipating, and it was a pretty good update overall. Uh, they play Bedrock Edition. Uh, definitely, for me, it was the update Aquatic. Uh, I still love that update so much. I think it was just such a perfect update, a great update for the Minecraft community. Uh, but definitely, Update Aquatic was a really good update as well that I enjoy. And we have a super chat. Um, from Jacob Truth, which is a good friend of mine, as well as one of our moderators and community leaders, or whatever community staff, I guess, is the less sort of, you know, um, interesting term for that. But anyway, it says, I craft MC just a cool dude. He works so hard to bring us good videos. That showbiz. Well, I appreciate that, Jay. And um, I definitely do try my best to bring videos. Uh, and as many as I can. And of course, as time goes along, I'll have to be a bit more creative with videos, as I have covered a lot of the basic things about Minecraft already. But although that is something kind of, uh, there's something sort of nervous about that in a sense, it's also exciting, because I feel like there's so much more that I can do to bring to my community here that we've been building. You know, I think that um, it's definitely, uh, you know, 100% chance we'll be reaching at least half a million subscribers this year. Um, but I've actually now had two uh, famous YouTubers, uh, very famous YouTubers, tell me that they think that I'll reach a million subscribers in 2023. So I'm not saying that will happen, but I am saying that famous YouTubers don't know absolutely nothing about YouTube. They definitely know what they're talking about. So we'll see what happens. But um, whatever happens, I'm definitely looking forward to the future of this channel. And we're going to break this pickaxe and then actually continue on this way. 
and see where we can go. Uh, I think this is going to lead us back to our main tunnel. We're kind of lost here, so we're going to go back this way, try and find our way back. We actually have another song playing, which is perfect. Um, I, I actually enjoy the old Nether songs. There's something about them that's quite uh, nostalgic, but also really does carry the correct vibe for what I think of when I think of the Nether, especially the Nether Wastes, and it's definitely something... I enjoyed. Someone says I've ever tried any Hypixel I have. I also have YouTube rank on there. Uh, so rarely I'll go on there just to sort of see all the people like rushing around or whatever. It's kind of funny. Um, but I do play Hypixel uh, rarely. And I do kind of enjoy those kind of mini games. I just have not played it a lot. So I'm definitely nowhere near an expert at uh, the, that sort of uh, area of the game. Now we do have a super chat. And. Um, We'll get that right now. It is from Evergreen Goddess for $20. Thank you so much. It says, what is your favorite thing about Minecraft? Like, what do you personally, um, or kind of why do you personally love it, love it so much? Uh, P.S. Uh, your daughter, Lemon Goddess, says, thanks for creating a space full of great people and great staff on your SMP. Well, I'm so glad that you enjoy my SMP and my community in general. We definitely try and keep it as sort of um, available and nice for everyone as possible. Really making an environment where people can actually just enjoy the base vanilla game in a way where they're not going to get griefed from. And they're also not going to have to sort of try and understand things that aren't really related to the main game. You know, I've played on a lot of servers where sort of the issue of them is that they're so modded, they have so many data packs, you actually have to learn a significant amount to play on them in sort of a competent way. Uh, and that, I find myself that to be quite confusing. So I feel like it's generally um, better to have kind of a base, simple uh, SMP, but I'm so glad uh, your daughter enjoys our SMP. And as well as that, to your question about what's my favorite thing about Minecraft, I would say it is probably the fact of just how every single block in the game can be broken and placed and crafted and you can do things with it. You know, to me, that's ultimately the biggest thing about Minecraft is the fact that, you know, and people don't think about this so much because it really does tend to kind of, um, you know, seem just uh, going without saying, uh, but it is really crazy to sort of get to a beautiful Minecraft environment. You know, you're on top of a mountain, you look around, and just to think, it is crazy that every single block you see can be broken, replaced, moved, crafted into different items. Really, really amazing to me and something I enjoy about Minecraft. I would say for sure the biggest thing is the sort of full customizability and ability to just break and replace and do things with everything. Because uh, in most games, you're kind of so limited to that. And someone asks, when did I start my Minecraft channel? You can actually check that on any YouTube channel very, very simply. All you have to do is go to the about page of the channel and it should say the date the channel was created. But for me, if I remember correctly, it was July 22nd, 2020. So that gives us, I guess, about a little over two and a half years. And I've been doing YouTube kind of more seriously for I would say probably about a year and a half. Um, but that is about when my channel was created. I believe again, July 22nd. Um, maybe be incorrect on that um, but I'm pretty sure it is all right well, this this uh, kind of direction is giving us sort of a lot of areas to mine although no netherite yet um, these always take so long to sort of do as to mine netherite but that's okay I'm gonna do that someone says you can break bedrock but can't obtain it um, that is true although of course you can't obtain it in you know creative the idea in general of course is just that the game doesn't really have any practical limits there are things like bedrock there are things like the fact that you can't build you know thousands of blocks into the sky uh, but these are not really limits that are actually kind of ran into by players that much either and even then of course everything has to have its limits now we do have another super chat from Mars McReady, who I believe is also someone who just became a member of the I Squad. So thank you again for that. And it says, "Hey, I hope your stream goes well. Question: I'm considering building a gold farm in my realm with me and my girlfriend, but how would you break the bedrock once you're on top of it? Um, this is something I need to make a video on because I, I did a long time ago make a video on this. I would not recommend watching that video. Um, but generally, the trick is this interesting thing you can do with pistons, where basically you kind of glitch out a piston to break a piece." of bedrock it's not that difficult but it's definitely not something i can explain just verbally here on the stream however what i would recommend is to watch some general tutorials on that make sure it's consistent with your minecraft version you know that it's updated to the newest version um 
but in general it is basically done fairly easily uh, with TNT, pistons, redstone blocks, not something that difficult, but it is something you have to be timed pretty well with, so it's important to kind of uh, get yourself some good escape supplies if you're doing that so you don't necessarily trap yourself above the roof of the nether, because although it's kind of ironic, definitely a difficult situation to get out of. Now someone says, is a netherite farm possible? A netherite farm is not possible. Um, although what is possible is a netherite tunnel bore. Um, that is pretty close to a netherite farm. Of course, it isn't technically one, but definitely the closest you would get to one. So I guess in some senses it is. Um, but if even something like that is actually fairly difficult to set up if you want it to run at a really good efficiency. I'm going to mine some more of this and mend up our tool. And we still haven't found any more netherite. And the thing that's always annoying is on one hand, it's like, well, maybe I should just mine netherite the entire stream. But on the other hand, too, I don't really think people want to watch me mining netherite for, you know, another two hours. So we'll probably stop in a little bit here. Uh, but we'll keep trying to get a bit more. It is incredibly dim here in another two. Super annoying thing that uh, people get in Bedrock that I do not get in Java is the nether is so much brighter in Bedrock. And I really wish it was... Uh, that much brighter in Java as well. Now we're going to go over here and kind of mine out a tunnel. We also have a super chat from our long-term biggest donator, Dirtbag PSN. So thank you so much to Dirtbag for that. Also having that luxurious gold iCraft MC badge there, which is of course done by being part of the iSquad. It says, since we we're doing our kids shoutouts, little Dirtbag aka Cyber King says thanks for the awesome SMP and community and making multiplayer Minecraft awesome for us. Well, thank you so much to you for playing on the server and for enjoying it. And I hope that you continue to enjoy the Minecraft SMP experience and learning the game from my videos. So um, really thank you. Big thank you to everyone in my community for that and just for being part of it. Even if let's say you just joined the stream right now, you have no idea who I am. Still thank you for everything you've done to just watch my videos, even just to watch the stream for a couple minutes. It really does help support the channel and keeps this uh, just project alive basically. All right, we're kind of really running out of good netherite kind of uh, finds here, unfortunately. Um, uh, but still, uh, we'll probably keep going here for a while and see what we can do uh, just over at this direction. Uh, it's so annoying when sometimes you're mining in a certain way and there just is nothing for a long time and then eventually maybe, like a little earlier, we found like two blobs of netherite in a fairly kind of, you know, pretty much in a row, uh, but now it's been kind of less so. Um, and actually, I should switch this out for this pickaxe. This is a really good one I brought. It's um, Breaking 3 Efficiency 4 Fortune 3. Now, of course, you know, a fortune 3 doesn't really matter, but what does matter is unbreaking 3, because what we were mining with is a fortune pick that does not actually have unbreaking, and so it's much better. We can mine with this, it's going to last a lot longer for us, and we can even, like, not even crouch, like, to mine like this, because we have fire resistance. We can kind of go like this, and, like, run when we're mining. That's kind of one of the ways that people do this really, really quickly, just like this. So that's probably the best trick to kind of get as much netherite as possible is to really run when doing it. But it also tends to get a little bit hard to even see. Uh, and so I'm sure this isn't necessarily the best viewing experience. I want to see where this tunnel goes. And I, of course, realized a little bit earlier that I have no idea where we're going. We've uh, significantly made ourselves a uh, amazing tunnel to get lost in underground, which is not shocking because that's generally what I tend to do in mining netherite. But, you know, still, it is what it is. Uh, we'll try and kind of find our way out, though. We might actually mine a tunnel upwards. We still have fire resistance, so it's okay. And maybe just see what's above us for the sake of interest, how far away we've gotten, kind of from our original tunnel downwards. So we'll go this way. And uh, we'll do that. Uh, someone says, does ancient debris generate in a specific biome in the nether? That's a great question. It doesn't. It generates in every biome. However, it is not a good idea to mine ancient debris in the basalt delta, as uh, most of the blocks there are so difficult to break. It will take you forever to actually get through that. And we're obviously underneath a lava lake, uh, which is not shocking. Uh, but we'll try and kind of go over this way. Maybe this way will give us some more netherite. We'll see. We're just going to kind of mine till our pickaxes run out of most of their durability. And then we can kind of go back up, try and get ourselves some actual netherite tools from this. And we'll kind of go this way to see what we can get out of that. Now, I think if we take a look at what we have in terms of items, again, your inventory does tend to get filled up with the... Uh, netherite, or not the netherite, but the netherrack. A very slight difference in terms of its actual terminology, netherite, netherrack. Uh, but one of them is so much more, um, uh, so much more, uh, difficult to get and important than the other one. 
and we'll go over here and we have a super chat from Horoko and it or Horoko or something like that. It says for five euros and it says uh, thanks to you and JC Plays for making me look like an absolute god when playing on our Bedrock Realm uh, with their nieces. Well, I'm so glad that my videos have helped you uh, learn more about the game. Uh, and it is always kind of funny. I have had some comments by many people saying that uh, they watch their videos just to kind of make their friends uh, think they're like the biggest pro at Minecraft. Which, I mean, that's one of the reasons to watch my videos. You can uh, learn more about Minecraft and, and become a pro through it, you know? I feel like if someone watched every single video I made, they could probably definitely go from noob to complete game pro. Um, of course, it combined with a little bit of game experience. Now, right there, we were kind of unlucky. We got one piece of ancient debris. It is crazy how difficult it is to get in a sense. Uh, but again, it mostly just relies on a ton of very tedious kind of mining and annoying tunnels and things like this. But, you know, just like kind of standard Minecraft strip mining, it can be enjoyable. It just takes quite a bit of time to do. And we'll go over here and see what we can get out of this tunnel. And we might even do the run method, see what we can do. This is again kind of the run method, run forward, going back and forth. See what you can find out of it. Tends to be pretty good. And we have someone saying, can you shout out their son, Rowan? He watches all your videos. We'll shout out to them. All right, I'm thinking we're going to try and go back to the surface now. I feel like we've been mining netherite for quite a while. And we're going to try and get back up here. Um, if you're watching the stream right now, by the way, feel free to like the video. It might seem like something kind of annoying, um, but it really does help it reach a ton more people and actually helps lots of people watch the stream. And later on in the stream, it'll make it have much more of a viewer base. In fact, last time I asked people to do that, they did. And we actually got an all-time record of viewers. So if you want to like, like the stream, uh, that does definitely help it. Now here's a real question. Why can we not fill up a bottle of lava? That would be so cool. Just right click on the uh, pool of lava there with the bottle. And you know, large amounts of lava and just sort of the very red textures of the nether always remind me of a really funny story. Now a computer I used to play Minecraft on, in fact even when I had my channel originally, very funny thing, it was a computer that a friend uh, made for me actually, and they got this computer out of the garbage. Now this computer was basically a giant screen. And the actual parts of the computer were made to be kind of fitting into the screens. Like there was like this graphics card that was literally just like poking out of the back of this massive screen. And it was kind of one of those really old like broken touch screens that like used to be really popular, you know, for everything to be touch screen for a while there. And so basically because of that, um, the screen was kind of broken and what would happen if there was too much red on the screen for too long. So like, let's say, you know, definitely what would happen inside the nether is this horrible line would appear on the screen where like right down the screen like this, there'd be like this just horrible red line or like the entire row of pixels was broken. You have to kind of like press on the screen to make it go away. And you, know, you wouldn't see it on recordings or anything, but I actually remember some recordings I'd made. Um, the line was on the screen when I was watching it. It was not on the screen when I was playing and so whenever I look at the nether I remember I'm like oh no the red line is going to appear if I don't get out of all this red area for a while but that was actually like two years ago I had that computer but still kind of a funny story of how far I've uh, gone since the red line garbage computer um, to of course where I am today. All right, so we've actually found a bastion. This is not on purpose. This is the bridge bastion. It is a really cool bastion because at the front of it, it's meant to look like a giant piglin. There's also this huge thing of gold. We're gonna start by getting rid of that ghast. I'm not sure if we're gonna raid the entire bastion right now since we did not plan on that, but we could. Um, tell me in the chat right now, should I raid this uh, amazingly interesting looking bastion or should we mark down the coordinates and do it a little bit later? Just spam in the chat right now what you think, raid the bastion or don't raid the bastion and we will do whatever the chat decides um, because that tends to be kind of interesting on live streams. Now, as we wait for the chat to decide and spam the chat full of that, looks like we have an overwhelming yes, although with a couple no's in there. We're just going to clear out some of our netherrack here and see what we can do. And uh, in terms of even the fire resistance, I guess we should still keep some on us. We're going to need it. Uh, we'll put away our uh, ancient debris. Now, this is always like a good time when you're sort of like, well, super important to have like a um, uh, ender chest. Because with an ender chest, we could actually take the ancient debris, put it in the ender chest, and protect it. And it looks like there is a million comments saying here yes to raid it. Absolutely. Except for a couple ones saying no. Um, but absolutely overwhelming. Um overwhelmingly the answer is yes now there is one unfortunate thing and it's my favorite way of raiding the bastions is to have boats we have no boats but look what we do have 
23 dark oak logs and I did not bring these on purpose so it is so perfect that we have those I was just looking through the chest thinking maybe there's a chance we have some wood in one of these didn't think I did but we did those 23 oak logs now you might be wondering why does it matter to have 23 oak logs how is that going to help us raid the bastion well it is in the biggest way possible and it actually makes the bastion from a structure that requires perfect netherite armor and amazing skills to something that is absolutely easy to deal with and that's the fact that piglin brutes and standard piglins and i believe even the baby hoglins uh, get trapped inside of boats so if we make ourselves a ton of boats we basically have tons and tons of piglin traps so we're going to do that right here and uh, basically just get ourselves these uh, shulker boxes kind of lined up, our inventory sorted. I eat throwing away items, we're going to throw away this nether rack here. And we're going to craft ourselves a ton of boats. So step number one when raiding a bastion, you want to get yourself a ton of boats. We'll make at least five, um, probably need more than that to be honest. We'll make like six, there we go. <laughs> well, we'll get some more in a minute here. Uh, but we have that, and we'll also drink a fire resistance. Now we do also have our chest plate, we'll put that on our second. We should be careful, our boots are low durability, we do not want to lose those because they have some good enchantments on them, although unfortunately no feather falling. So because of that, we are going to just be kind of really cautious with this. Um, again, this is the bridge bastion type, it is kind of the least valuable in some ways, um, but still, we have some good benefits of this. Now we're going to go here, see if we can get another track to play. Uh, there we go. And it's supposed to look like a giant piglin, actually, so it's hard to see. I will kind of fly to the front of it, so you can hopefully see it. But yeah, it's supposed to look like a giant piglin face. You can basically see that. There's like the shoulders, there's the nose, there's the eyes. We'll see if we can get to a stationary position to see it. It's kind of difficult, though. There's like a tongue maybe sticking out, something like that. Now, we should now have the advancement. First bastion in the world, you can tell, confirmed. Um... The zombified piglin there is skilling this, uh, scaring this piglin, that's why it's kind of not going after us. And we're going to mine some of these gold blocks here and get ourselves that. You know, funny enough that the stream started with the pig step music disc. And now what are we doing? We are raiding where we could actually find that pig step disc in game. And we have a super chat from Jellocat. And it says, hey, they're actually a new player that started a few weeks ago and just wanted to say that your videos have been a great help. Thank you. Well, I'm so glad that you enjoy my videos and they've been a good help. I do try and make my videos be sort of um, useful for players who just started or also have been playing for a long time because I've too often found Minecraft tutorials online that no joke are things like how do you find sand blocks? You know, something that are just not really applicable to anyone except for if you've never played Minecraft ever before. Um, whereas, of course, with my videos, I do try and have a sort of variety of facts from basic to also a lot more complicated. All right, so where is the loot in this structure? Well, it tends to be in sort of the upper areas of it. Um, I did have a bastion reading guide uh, quite a while ago, so I do have some sort of um, knowledge retained from that that we can use to raid this effectively. And these tend to be pretty easy to raid, honestly. It just is kind of risky, and you want to have a lot of sort of leverage to move away. We were talking earlier in the stream about leverage when fighting mobs. It's the same idea. There's a chest, by the way. And we do have this hoglin here. The problem with hoglins is that they are uh, not really easy to be dealt with without projectiles. I wish we had some projectiles. We do not. So I'm going to... Now, that's actually trapped, so that's good. But I'm going to have to trap... There's a brute there. It cannot get up to us, I don't believe. Uh, but it will get close to the chest. So we're going to go down here, hoping we're safe. I think we are. And we're going to put down that boat. Oh, we can get a fireworks out of our hand. Put down the boat there, try and capture that uh, brute. Or who just hit it off the edge? That works too, I guess. And, um, of course, now that this is in this position... We can just hit that if it's trapped, you know, something like this always works, but they can still get to you sometimes, so it's good to be careful. I do think there is a way, in fact, yeah, oh, right over there, I think there's a way they can get to us, and I was correct, there is. Uh, so we're just going to get out a boat, put that boat down like this, that's kind of a good trap, it's like you're setting out some, some traps, so that should kind of run into that. Uh, very rarely that does not work, so it's good to not be like fully confident. Oh, there's a lodestone, that's really awesome, and hopefully none of that falls in the lava, it didn't. Um, I believe the lodestone is actually a unique loot to the bridge bastion, if I remember correctly. And so because of that, it's actually great that we found that. Um, there is also kind of an area like inside the piglin's nose or ear or something like this, kind of around here, or sort of what would be like the giant piglin's nose or ear, um, that has a chest in it. So we'll look out for that. I think we're on top of its nose, yeah, right now. 
and there's like its eyes kind of like it's hard to see really it's it's pretty simple sort of uh construction but it does look like a giant pig um so we'll get another bodar inventory here and in fact we should probably mine some of these the uh uh gilded black stone beautiful beautiful block if anyone's wondering what my favorite building block is could definitely be the gilded black stone absolutely gorgeous block has that beautiful sort of texture of like the black mixing with the uh, gold there really beautiful looks like something you'd see in you know like a millionaire's sort of marble table or something um so that's quite cool now we see a lot of mobs congregating down there again if we had a bow and arrow this would be make uh sort of made so much easier but you know sort of interesting to to raid things and you don't have all the supplies because then it's like more uh sort of like uh realistic or whatever all right we have some gold blocks in the walls there and i believe that might have actually been the chest that's sort of in the nose that we were raiding right over there uh so we're gonna have to take a look around here for more things to get um things like the piglins and the hoglins will just spawn Perfect. in again because it's just a crimson forest they'll spawn there no matter where we are but the piglin brutes are limited so we can try and capture those and deal with them uh, but again they are super dangerous mobs so we have to be very careful about what we're doing we might actually try flying through here is that going to work it is there we go there's also this lower level here we could take a look at that let's see if we can get some of these piglins yeah kind of isolated away and gotten rid of they are going to spawn in again because again they're not like part of the generation of the structure um things like these aren't that dangerous you can kind of hit them before they get you uh but stuff like the brutes are a lot more dangerous we do have another super chat um and is from Evergreen Goddess for $5. It says, get the Gilded Blackstone for a build. It's my favorite block. I definitely will get some of the Gilded Blackstone. It is an absolutely beautiful block and item. All right, so down here we could find some mobs. We have to be careful, uh, very careful. Now these areas are sort of, you know, they always would look a lot better if they weren't damaged. Um, we can actually grab some of the Netherrack out of one of our boxes here and get it as sort of some like random building blocks funny that just a little minute ago we were having issues in terms of not having you know having too many blocks on us but now we don't even have enough so we'll just put some of those away put the gold away get that kind of sorted and then uh, pick that up again and go back here to raid the rest of this structure so all right we have this we also have the area down here there's a ton of gilded blackstone for sure and we can kind of make this more of a pathway, make this more raidable. Right above us is the majority of those piglins, so we have to be really, really careful. Any block above us uh, being broken is always a big danger. And of course, this lava can also flow. Big thing that you probably do know about Minecraft, but if you've never noticed it before, you may, might not. That's the fact that lava flows, and it flows at the same distance as water if it's in the nether. So basically, lava in the overworld doesn't flow very far, but lava in the nether flows at the same speed as water in the overworld, but as well as that, it goes super, super far away. And this is definitely an underknown fact, because um, I've actually seen players have issues with this before, where they think they can just walk away from lava when they run into it. That's why it's so dangerous in Minecraft, because if you have that issue, you'll basically very, very quickly get overtaken by the lava. Again, right here would be perfect for a bow and arrow. We could just hit all these mobs. It's always good to make sure to have something like that if you are going to raid the structure. We're going to go over this way. They say, is there always a lot of lava and bastions? Uh, almost always, yeah, there is. It's kind of part of it. Uh, lava, blackstone, those sorts of items are definitely what you tend to find. Now, we're going to again look around here a bit more. Um, I believe in terms of general loot, there isn't a lot. I think there's only like two or three chests usually. Uh, so we'll probably just try and get rid of those piglins there and keep going. But still, we got a bit of that. And we'll also mark down the coordinates to make sure we don't do that again. The trick of that, F3, then F2, if you're on Java. Get yourself a coordinate screenshot, and we'll get some of that. Um, oh, I just mounted the wrong tool. That's always annoying. We did it with the um, with that, and our fire resistance is at 4 minutes. We will drink this, we'll go through the lava, see if there's anything on the other side. I doubt there is. Uh, there is definitely not. Uh, but still, we can kind of go up here, see where it leads, actually. It probably just leads to the top of the structure. We cannot enter swim mode in lava, which is annoying. But at the top here, there might be some mobs, actually. We should be careful. Uh, there's not. It's the top of the structure, so that's fine. And we will kind of fall down. Ah, uh, there we go. All right, we have that. And uh, we'll go this way. Okay, so we need to now go to sort of the more dangerous area. This is what I've been kind of avoiding. I hear the brutes, and I think they're just below me, but I don't know for sure. Oh, there's one. And it literally just uh, dropped off the cliff because it's absolutely genius. We can actually crawl like this. 
<laughs> this is funny. It's like our spying position. This would have been a great thumbnail screenshot. Um, just our spying position here, you know, looking at the bastion. We're just really comfortable here, kind of squished inside a mushroom, so that's perfect. Let's get to another nether song, actually. There we go. All right, and the hoglins there, again, we don't have any projectiles. We have the arrows, I guess, but no crossbow. Um, we are going to do something a little risky, and we're going to basically go over here. We do have that here. We'll show you the trick with these. Put down the boat again, let them run into the boat, and if they don't run into the boat, we're uh, definitely in a bad space. If they do, we're good. And I did run into the boat, so we're good. Um, man, the noises bug me because it worries me. And there's a lot of piglins. There we go. There's the entire sort of group of them. Uh, big thing about Elytra, you know, you don't get more um, protection, but you do have that amazing ability to just fly away and forget about sort of uh, your issues. So we're going to go back here again. Sort of try and deal with these. We should probably have gold on, honestly. The problem is if we hit those brutes, the brutes uh, are going to make the other piglins mad again. So in terms of actually really valuable things to get out of the structure, there isn't a whole lot. Um, so I think that we'll probably just uh, stay out of it for now. But we did basically raid it. We got the gold. We got that one chest. Um, there's probably structures I'm missing, honestly, inside like these arms or something. Um, but overall, there's actually a great view from here. You can see that it is a big piglin. So there is the eyes, there is the nose, there is the shoulders, and there are the teeth. It's kind of funny to look at that. Um, but anyway, we have to get back to about zero, zero. That's going to tend to be where our way back is because we're not that far from spawn. One of the many great things about being near spawn is the fact that, of course, finding your coordinates back is usually uh, incredibly easy. So we'll go this way. Uh, someone says, does Java has 72 chunk render distance? No, it has 32 chunk render distance. And even then, it doesn't work very well. <laughs> I know Bedrock does go up to 96. Um, I've had played Bedrock on 96 before, but it does tend to be, like, just stupidly laggy. So even with Bedrock, it's at practical limits. Definitely nowhere near uh, 96 for sure. We're going to go this way. I think we just actually went in a giant circle. We did. That was um, highly unproductive. Now we're going to see what we can do in terms of kind of getting back to where we were before. We do have that fire resistance, so we can be kind of risky like this. Sort of just touching the tip of the lava there. Um, or sort of the top of it, I guess. And uh, we'll go over here, try and find our way back. Uh, not a big issue. And all right, this, this kind of leads back. There's the soul sand, so that's sort of a good sign. I hate it when the wall, uh, fire gets on the screen because it's so annoying to see around. Right, we're going to stay near the zombified piglin. It'll protect us from those other piglins. Um, and we have that. Now, let's see here. This will probably lead to our right direction. We're actually going to go mining. <laughs> we could. I guess there's not technically like a guarantee of there being a, a way back because we did kind of mine our way back. Um, but if we sort of like go around, we can probably find it um, like this. Just kind of go around that big mountain sort of thing. Uh, that should work. Maybe? <laughs> Maybe not. Oh, this kind of goes through it. There we go. There's our way out. There we go. I think so, anyway. We'll try and find our way around. Although we're running out of fireworks, which is actually, like, really bad. Um, like, super bad. Because, uh, once we're out of fireworks, we're, like, stuck, which is not good. In fact, speaking of that, our elytra durability is still good. But always good to check that. Um, we're again getting kind of far out. So we might do, just because we may as well. So we'll just mine our way there um, because we can go so fast with our pickaxes here. We'll just mine this direction and we'll get there in no time so we can just walk there. And thank you to Darsimist for becoming a member of the Ice Squad. I guess renewing your subscription there or whatever it was. But thank you so much. And oh no, I see what it is. It's the, I always forget about this. There's these really cool things you can do if you're a member of a channel. You get one message. I think it's a month or maybe it's every two weeks. I forget. It's one of the two. And you can send that message, um, basically like a super chat, uh, but just as part of your membership. And it says, thank you for the informative videos and streams. Well, thank you so much to Darsimus for that message. Uh, and I definitely try my best to inform people as much as I can with both. Now we're almost to zero, zero in terms of coordinates. I guess we just have to kind of mine up and around. This is like reminding me of our netherite mining, but we're not really netherite mining. Um, all right, so we're going to kind of get our food back up a bit and we'll see what we can do. And we're going to find that. Uh, this is... That looks like it goes to the Soul Sand Valley. So if we fly up there, that'll probably take us to where we need to go. Uh, we're going to like this, maybe? Uh, maybe. There's like kind of a bit of an entrance. Although we're crouched down, we can't actually fly, which is funny. So we're sort of stuck. Uh, but either way, we have that. So we'll go over this way and uh, do that.
Now, uh, we have a single piece of bone here. <laughs> this is so funny. So we go into this little area. It's like, oh, here's this little sand valley. Well, there are three pieces of fire and the smallest possible uh, smallest possible fossil. So I guess technically it is a uh, soul sand valley we've just found our way into. But in reality, of course, just a small cave. Uh, we have to throw away some netherrack to pick that up, actually. Now, in terms of coordinates... We just have to go back. Oh, just reloaded all chunks. So we just have to go back this way. Uh, I feel like being really risky and flying through that small space. Uh, I'm going to do it. Oh, we almost did it. It stopped us. Let's see if we can do this. Yes. Yes. There we go. Perfect. <laughs> Perfect. Now, not a good idea because we don't really actually have uh, fire resistance. In fact, we don't have it at all. But still, uh, we do now have our way out, kind of. Now, this may go the direction we want to, actually. In fact, it looks like it does. Ah, it does. There we go. Finally. We have two fireworks left. So this is, like, just in time, I believe. Right over here. Right over here. There is our portal. Perfect. Absolutely perfect. We'll uh, get this skeleton. Trick to skeletons. Uh, shield. Offhand. Block arrow. When it's reloading, hit it. Arrow. Hit it. Block the arrow. Hit it. There we go. And that's kind of the trick with that. And speaking of people joining the Ice Squad, we just had two people, so uh, Chrono Illusion and also Ghostbot. Welcome to both of you to the Ice Squad, and hopefully you enjoy it. There's tons of things you can do. And if you link your Discord to your um, YouTube, which you can do on Discord, it's pretty simple, then you'll actually get that VIP lounge in my server. So let's take a look at what we've actually got in terms of overall treasure and sort of items from that bastion and nether and netherite mining raid we have nine ancient debris we have of course a bunch of netherite which doesn't really matter uh some other random items here more or less 16 blocks of gold which is good uh and also the lodestone and i think some of those arrows might have been from one of the loot chests but uh overall pretty good uh seven gunpowder which i like quite a bit and we'll put that in here. So we have, yeah, 16 blocks of gold. That's over two stacks of gold ore. So actually quite over two stacks of gold ingots, which is pretty good. And we now, of course, also have a random amount of useless netherrack, a huge amount of useless netherrack. Probably the most common item that people get but do not want. Um, and we have a super sticker from Chrono Illusion as well for $20, which is the Shiba Inu waving a flag of number one. So thank you so much for that. I appreciate all the support from everyone. And we're going to do a quick little scout out for any creepers around, although I guess we can't really because we kind of uh, just rounded a firework rocket, so we're going to have to make more again. I uh, definitely, definitely time to make a creeper farm. Uh, and again, if you're enjoying the stream right now, feel free to like the stream. It really does help it reach a lot more people. Uh, and as well as that, feel free to ask me any questions you want in the chat of the stream. We'll go this way. And someone says, uh, just want to say thank you for your channel. I'd be so lost with these new Minecraft updates uh, without your videos on it. Well, thank you so much for that. Um, and I definitely try my best, and I'm really looking forward to actually. The great news is that I think it's very likely we're going to be seeing 1.20 snapshots coming soon. You know, of course, new 1.20 snapshots. And uh, with those, we can then um, start to see... Uh, many more features be introduced and really look over them and kind of see how the new game is going to look. You know, not really the new game, but side of the, you know, new things inside of Minecraft. So we have that. Now to take ancient debris and turn it into netherrack or netherite, um, not into netherrack. We would not want to turn this into netherrack. You take that ancient debris and you smelt it. However, ancient debris does take twice as long as a normal thing to smelt, or so I'm told, although this actually looks like it's smelting pretty normally. We'll let that netherite scrap go through there. So we have that happen. And uh, we'll go over this way. And again, thank you to everyone in the chat for all the messages, thanking me for my channel and for the videos. I really appreciate all of them and all the support. I definitely try my best to um, make the uh, best videos with information on the channel as I can. All right, so we're going to put these away. We do have our lodestone, though. Let's put that at our new base, and we'll do that in a second once we get some more gunpowder um, or some more fireworks. So we have gunpowder there, and we also have the paper and sugar cane somewhere around here. Um, in this chest over here, I believe we have gunpowder. There we go. We won't use all of it, though. We'll save a little bit for the uh, potential brewing we might need it for. 
And in one of these chests, there's some paper. But I think we have a bit more paper around here as well. And we can hopefully use that. So we're also at level 30. We may as well use that as well. See what we can get in terms of maybe a good new tool. We have a lot of random loot from earlier sort of things we were working on. So we should probably try and upgrade that as sort of the whole point. is upgrading our tools, upgrading our armor, and even just getting better enchantments on it being part of that upgrading. All right. Let's see what we have here in terms of the sugar cane. There we go. And we'll craft the paper and the gunpowder with that. All right, we now have 60, which is pretty good. And we are going to then, of course, get ourselves the maybe some new boots, or maybe a boot upgrade at least. Our boots are so close to being broken. Super important that we actually get the things needed to deal with that. Yeah, so I think that's probably good, and basically, uh, so to upgrade the boots, we need more durability on them, so we can kind of combine them with another pair of boots. Uh, something I'd love to know as well is kind of what enchantments we'd be offered um, with a random pair of boots. This pair of boots isn't the best, but there's some good things on it. Uh, this pair is pretty bad, but there's also some good things on it, so it's kind of hard to just disenchant one of these. We do have a large number of diamonds, though, so we could take these diamonds and use those to make a new pair of boots, if that is the thing we most need, which actually a helmet probably is honestly more. Current helmet looks like it's garbage, um, and most of these are kind of garbage actually as well, so we'll make a helmet and a uh, another pair of boots, although we will, of course, do something with that a little bit later, so we have helmet, we have boots. We're just going to check the enchantments here, always a good idea. See what kind of enchantments are offered, see what we can get. Here we have Unbreaking 3, our current boots do, or they do have Unbreaking 3, so that's not that useful. The helmet is Protection 4, current helmet does not have Protection 4, so it could be a good idea to enchant that with Protection 4. We may as well do that just to get ourselves a better helmet, and that is also Unbreaking 3 and Aqua Affinity, um, which we can replace here. Uh, for an even better helmet than the previous one we had by quite a bit. Now for the boots, we could combine these two and we could enchant this again. Um, what is being offered? Depth Strider 3. Uh, these boots do also have Depth Strider 3, so that's not a great offer. We'll put that away there. We could see what any books are maybe giving us. We're kind of looking for things like um, Feather Falling 4 would be really good, um, or even just Feather Falling 2 or 3. And uh, we actually have a pair of boots here too. These are Protection 4 and Breaking 3. What we could do because the only benefit with these is the Depth Strider, is just replace it for this one for now. Then eventually we'll upgrade it later, but we can kind of keep that uh, not breaking by accident. We'll put these away in here. Now for anyone just watching the stream, kind of wondering what's going on, uh, what am I doing, what's kind of, you know, the whole deal with this world right now, we have, of course, right now this kind of tiny base area. But the eventual idea is to make a very large mega base kind of project area over here. On this mountain that we've already cut down quite a bit. Now, don't worry, it was not like a massive mountain like this before. Although I'd love to have people imagine I mined that much down on stream, although we definitely didn't. It was kind of maybe up to here. But either way, you can see we just have to mine out this bit of stone here and here, and then this whole area is flat and ready to be built at. So that's sort of what we have been working on so far. This portal does actually lead us over, and we also brought ourselves over some villagers. A lot of our items are already over here, sort of in this chest. And we have a great view from here of the surrounding mountains, like let's say these mountains here, and also that mountain there and kind of where our base is in that direction. In terms of general items we have here, mostly just stone and cobblestone and things like that, but still a good variety of uh, useful items that we can use for later on. We actually have a half a stack of fireworks in there, I forgot about that. Um, and we're going to go over here, go back to our base and see what else we can upgrade. Now we do have, our sword could use mending. I think we do have an extra mending book, if we don't we could go to the village, try and get one. We have a mending villager there, but we haven't zombified anything as we don't have a villager system set up yet. So because of that, what we could do is we could kind of get mending on our tools already, just with a lot of effort, or we could wait and kind of get it on there later. Let's also get all the enchanted items out of these chests and take a look through them. Maybe we can find a really good enchantment on one of these and then maybe replace that for some of our current tools. That could definitely be a good idea. So we'll go through here. We mostly have leggings and hose, and that's of course on purpose uh, because the leggings and the hose are both things that you find in the... Uh, 
in the ancient cities, and the ancient cities is where we got most of this loot from. So we'll grab all those. I think our current pair of leggings is pretty good. Uh, it is, in fact, it's literally perfect, um, except for thorns, and I don't really prefer thorns. Uh, so there's that. Uh, but then over here, we can kind of put it where all this uh, deep slate and stuff was, kind of get this sorted up uh, overall, and then get ourselves a good variety. This is our fortune pickaxe there, though. So we'll grab that, get that uh, switched out, because this was just a random pickaxe, although it's almost better than our fortune pickaxe. It's just the fortune pickaxe has mending, uh, but this one has unbreaking three, but this one also has efficiency five. So there's sort of, you know, benefits and weaknesses with both of those. This is also definitely a better hoe here, but this one is important if we want to be mining the skulk blocks. So we'll go that way. Someone says add mending to your armor. That is a good idea. This piece does have mending. The elytra has mending, uh, but the leggings or the um, uh, boots and the helmet do not. So if we could find ourselves mending books, that would be definitely a good thing to do. And in here we actually just have a lot of random enchantments. Uh, no mending, mostly just swift sneak. Some other random things, nothing terrible, uh, but not really what we're looking for either. So we'll put away some of these random building blocks in a second here. Uh, we'll put them in there. We'll put them in one of these for now, I think. And then we can maybe go and get ourselves some more mending books. Or even just general enchant level ups like our axe here. Um, not a great axe. We could definitely try and get some more stuff on there. See what we have in terms of books. Anything here kind of tool worthy? I don't really see anything so far. Uh, flame is pretty good. We don't really have a bow we're working on. Thorns 2, Swift Sneak 3. Silk Touch. Okay, Silk Touch is pretty good. We'll grab that. Um, and anything else? Not too much. Most of this is just a Swift Sneak. There's a Protection 4. That's definitely worth it if we need it Protection 4, which I don't think we actually do. There's also Fortune 2, so we could technically combine it with that to get Fortune 3. Uh, but again, not necessarily worth it. Um, Smite 5. That is a great enchantment. We'll grab that. But our current sword is already a sharpness sword. That does, again, not help us that much. So, uh, Silk Touch and Protection 4. Anything needing those? It doesn't seem like it in terms of armor. No, everything is Protection 4. And then in terms of Silk Touch, uh, this shovel could use Silk Touch, actually. We could add it to there. Let's see if we have a better shovel we could maybe base that Silk Touch on. Could definitely be a good idea. And someone says what's happening. They just got there. We're basically trying to upgrade our tools, get ourselves a good amount of sort of supplies for a later on project. But speaking of that, I guess it was done smelting. It's our netherite scrap. Once you have your netherite scrap, what you want to do is get yourself also some gold. And with that gold and with the netherite scrap, put four gold ingots and four netherite scrap in the crafting grid. And four of both of these will give you one netherite ingot, which shows absolutely how rare this item is, how incredibly valuable and difficult to get it can be, if you don't mind it for an incredibly long amount of time. And so, we now have both of those. We could upgrade it. Uh, we don't have the correct tool table, I don't think, actually, or the correct sort of crafting table. Uh, we might have to make that. That is the... Um, the tool to get those combined so we need to get ourselves some iron and some planks for that the crafting recipe again requires two iron and some planks we'll go over here we'll make ourselves that you can see it's like a crafting table and then the iron ingots that gives us the smithing table as of course i guess the idea would be that iron smiths would combine those ingredients to give ourselves the correct tools now our silk touch pickaxe here is really great it is uh, every literally perfect enchantment so that's a great idea of something to upgrade to netherite i think we will do that so we'll put that right there uh, maybe but let's actually take a good look at everything we have um our leggings are basically perfect and so is our chest plate so we could upgrade our army arm armor as well we've been doing a bunch of mining so probably getting a more efficient tool is better or a sort of a higher durability tool uh, so we'll do that uh, put that through right here. You'll notice durability, about a third. So 455 out of 1,561. Again, about 30% is durability there. However, over here, it's 925 out of 2,031. So that's almost half. So we're actually gaining durability by upgrading that, which is kind of funny. So we'll upgrade that. 
We could also upgrade our sword. I think honestly it might seem stupid, but it is looting three. Now, of course, you'd think, oh, well, upgrading our armor is a better idea. And it is in a sense. There's also the sense, too, that if we lose this looting three, it's absolutely a bad thing. However, something I am going to do is I'm going to check the enchantability of this. We want to try and rename this, see how many levels it costs. It doesn't seem to cost very many at all, which is good, because if it did cost a lot, it would mean that it had a very high enchantability, or sort of had um, been enchanted a lot of times. And so basically that would mean it'd be super, super expensive. Like, let's say trying to combine these even, uh, which we'd never do because it's not a good idea. Uh, but if we did do that, um, I don't think it's a good idea anyway, is it? Uh, knock back and uh, no, it is not a good idea at all. You get one enchantment while losing two. Uh, but still, the price there is not that much. The, the 14, it shows it just overall. There's not a high base enchantment cost. So it is a good sword to upgrade. Uh, there's no mending on it, though, so it's technically a risk. Um, overall, I think I think we will upgrade it. We could also upgrade our leggings to that, since we do have swift sneak on our leggings. Always kind of a big question of like what to upgrade, especially if we don't have a huge amount of different things. And also welcome to BDFF gamers in the chat there. Now we have, uh, let's see. I, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say we're gonna do the sword just because I want to keep that looting. But what we're also gonna do is we're gonna get ourselves mending on that sword uh, right now. Uh, something really cool about the sword is as well the fact that we can now um, damage mobs even better because of course we have that really high damage uh, because it is netherite and we're gonna try that out right now. So we're gonna go up here, fight some creepers as we have been doing like almost every night on here and then use that gunpowder to get ourselves uh, some more fireworks of course. Um, but this sword is so upgraded now it's gonna make it so much easier because we have a perfect sword in terms of its uh, level Level of being upgraded uh, and that's also sharpness 5. Now not the perfect enchantments yet but we will get that uh, for sure 100%. We just need mending, knockback, flame and I think that's actually it and that would give us the perfect sword. All right we're gonna go over here. Actually is sweeping edge on there? It is on there. So yeah we'd just be three enchantments. Pretty easy enchantments too and then we can go over here. Now this zombie has an iron sword. It is no match for me. We're going to get rid of that zombie very quickly. Unfortunately, not a smite sword we have, so it's not, you know, absolutely perfect for zombies, but still pretty good. Let's get that creeper. Let's get the other creeper. The other one might have exploded there. I feel like we were very close in the radius. And uh, you might notice there we didn't get very hurt, even though the creeper exploded really close to us. The reason is pretty simple. It's basically that we were a little bit lower than the creeper, so we were safe. As I said earlier, if you find a one-horned goat, look around for the goat horn. I did not see one, so we're uh, probably not going to be able to find it, and it probably fell off a long time ago. Maybe even one of the ones we grabbed, but still. Very good to try and look around for goat horns if you do see a one-horned goat. So we'll do that. And we got both those creepers, quite a bit of gunpowder from both of them. We'll go back this way, try and get some more creepers. We have a baby zombie we have to avoid here, so we're going to grab that. And um, try and get the... My aim is terrible today, but we'll try and get that and go over here. And we'll get those creepers that are in our farm. I think they're at our farm because they're trying to blend in, because of course they're green like the crops we have. So we'll do that and go over there. Someone says knockback is not good in their opinion. I think knockback is good depending on what you're using it for. So of course with something like a skeleton, it's actually not that good. But with something like creepers, it is nearly vital when you're fighting mobs. So absolutely depending on if their attack is melee or if it's ranged, to me really spells the difference as to whether or not it's a good enchantment or not. Now that skeleton kind of helped us by hitting us there because it actually gives us the ability to then get a little bit further away from those creepers and be somewhat safer while dealing with these alternative mobs here as we're trying to fight here these uh, creepers, which are sort of our main target. And we'll get that one, and we'll get the uh, skeleton here first. We even literally got that other creeper just with knockback, or just with sweeping edge, that is, which is pretty good. We already have 17 gunpowder. so crazy how quick you can actually get these kind of resources um, if you are just uh, having looting there. So such a good enchantment. I think it was definitely worthwhile to upgrade our sword that we can, of course, be trying out right here. Uh, we've already been to the end, of course, in this world, got ourselves those kind of tools. But if we hadn't, killing that Enderman there would have been a good idea. And there is a massive goat jump there. We could technically see a goat ram one of these creepers' lives. Uh, live, we could now see uh, one of the... We could now... Sorry. We get five of these creepers at once. I'm trying to focus on, like, 20 things at once. <laughs> we'll get these creepers there. Uh, hopefully none of them explode. And uh, we have that. So there's three left. Again, you don't want to get into bad situations or like that. 
being in a limited area, unfortunately items are destroyed by explosions. Not always, but oftentimes. So because of that, if you have like a bunch of gunpowder sitting on the ground, one of those creepers explodes next to it. Um, unfortunately, we do have that issue of those items being destroyed. So we have that. I'll go over here and we have one more creeper here. I'll probably grab this one. I feel like my frame rate is pretty low too, which I do blame not having Optifine for. Hopefully all those things do upgrade to 1.19.3 soon, uh, so we can actually use that as well as having sort of the newest bug uh, fixes and things like that. All right, we actually have a no-horned goat over here. <laughs> the poor thing. It lost both of, both of its goat horns uh, in very um, purposeful accidents of ramming into mobs and hitting a block by accident, so that's kind of funny. Oh, I no one saw that. We're gonna just, uh, yeah, that didn't, <laughs> that didn't happen. I might have thought that was a creeper. Um, I did think that was a creeper, so yeah, that didn't happen. Rip, rip, uh, rest in peace there to, to that, uh, harmless goat. So we'll go over this way. <laughs> sort of the casualty of running in front of me with my netherite sword. And we actually have some emerald ore there, which is kind of good. I'll go this way. Um, I can unfortunately now no longer say that no uh, Minecraft goats were uh, harmed in the making of this live stream. One unfortunately was, so we'll have to you know, rest in peace, um, you know, F in the chat for that goat. But we'll go this way, and I think we've got enough gunpowder, about half a stack. And we will sleep, and then get ourselves sort of uh, more things we're doing in the morning there. Something really cool is that Alays actually glow. So you can see here we have like at night, really that awesome glow of the Alay mob, sort of like a pure uh, kind of light that it gives. Not really like a light that kind of goes out from it, um, but still kind of like this weird glowing effect, sort of like a glow squid does really. And we'll sleep here so we don't have phantoms later on. Someone says in the chat, why don't I make a creeper farm instead of fighting? I definitely will uh, pretty soon make a creeper farm. We have a ton of snowballs from those creeper explosions, so I guess that's like one benefit of that. Um, and we'll put away these mob drops in the mob drops chest. Now we don't really need any more fireworks for right now, uh, so we will just keep those in the mob drops chest there. And I think we need to kind of get the durability on our tools back up. So we're going to be um, sort of go do something we've done quite a bit on the streams actually before. We're going to do it again. And that is venturing into the deep dark biome beneath us and getting our tools sort of healed up a bit. We're definitely going to slow down on doing that because I think that's definitely time for an XP farm. But still for now, there's still some XP to be had. And as long as we have a decent thing to mine it with, this isn't even that uh, great, so we might even get like a different hoe. Um, we can then get ourselves a ton of XP, like basically for free. So we'll grab that, and we'll go down there, and we'll also put away the uh, random other things we have for now. All right, now for my favorite thing. We're gonna go all the way down here, all the way down, all the way down. Actually, not all the way down. We'll go, we'll go most of the way down. I think we'll stop here. This area is mostly unmined out, so we'll mine this. Uh, here is kind of what you want to do to basically mine out this area safely. Alright, so what we want to do is we need to uh, mine these blocks here and put the tool needing to be held or healed in our offhand. And we'll go like this, just sort of again, clearing all those skulk blocks, harvesting them there. Uh, definitely not a sort of long-term solution since of course this area will get uh, progressively more and more mined out but still for short-term solution it's great and we can get ourselves a ton of xp to heal up our tools and even maybe find some lapis lazuli or which is pretty good so we'll do that uh, we'll go around this direction and put down some more torches although we keep breaking them <laughs> now we'll go over here and uh, just get ourselves a whole bunch of skulk blocks as many as we can and we'll do that as well. Now someone is saying in the chat I should probably make a monument for that goat. Um, we could, uh, but unfortunately it didn't drop anything for us to put in a monument, so there is that. Now I think there are certain things Minecraft could do if it was being realistic. They definitely won't, as I don't think they would kind of, make, let's say, align with their values. So for example, technically, 
If you kill a turtle, it should drop a turtle shell. But also technically, if you draw if you kill a goat, it should drop goat horns. And this is something that Mojang should technically add if it wants to be more realistic. Of course, I understand the reason why they don't. They want to sort of show like ways that you can kind of more, you know, friendly to the mob get these items. Um, but still, this is technically something that they could add to the game. Um, although the thing is too is like, you know, when you find like let's say like an old goat horn up on a mountain in terms of Minecraft, well, I guess people I'm sure have had that happen in real life too. Um, you know, I think the idea would be it's sort of been there for a while. It's kind of like dried out, all those sort of things. So it would sort of make more sense if it was um, kind of like you just kind of see them there. Like they might just kind of sit there like let's say a mob would just floating on the ground. And they wouldn't necessarily be like they just broke off from the mob. They'd probably be a bit more realistic. Now where this uh, tool is getting pretty healed here actually. Um, although it seems like kind of a waste to just destroy all of the skulk here. And it is kind of in a sense. The one thing that's nice is that... We're basically converting this area into just a standard cave, but it still retains that peaceful mode functionality that you get in this kind of biome. So basically, the deep dark biome is completely peaceful mode, and I do mention this a lot, but it's really important. It's the fact that you just get no mobs here whatsoever except for the warden. And so because of that, we actually have this really safe environment where we can basically mine this out, but then later on do literally whatever we want in terms of, let's say, you know, building a base here or doing whatever else. There's no issue in terms of running into a thousand skeletons or creepers. So we'll go over here and uh, we'll go this way. We actually have the five music discs going on. We may as well let that play as we are in the deep dark biome, which is kind of the place to get the five music discs. So we'll let that play there as we have the uh, sort of scary ambiance to mining in the deep dark biome. So we'll turn that on. And uh, tell me in the chat there, what do you think of the five music disc? Definitely similar to 11 and 13 in terms of it sort of uh, being more like a soundtrack than anything else. Um, there's this funny part right here that we're listening to in the five music disc, where it's kind of like this background song, like maybe something from like an old movie or something, and maybe kind of meant to be like uh, spooky or whatever. I definitely can tell that Mojang was trying to make the warden be like a horror sort of thing. And I think they did a good job sort of balancing it. Um, but of course, sort of once you get used to the warden, it's actually like a really easy mob to deal with. But there's still that horror element, although for me, I tend to get most things in Minecraft to be so technicalized or whatever. Um, but it's not really something that I am really worried by anymore as the warden, but still very interesting, the five music disc for sure. Someone says to swap out the tool, you are correct. We're gonna replace that with the fortune pickaxe. However, what we did do is we did get our levels up to 31, as of course, if we're not currently getting our levels up, uh, we're then mending a tool. So it kind of works either way. And we'll go over here and get ourselves the rest of this XP uh, off the wall and we'll put down the torch as well. And I think this might actually be, uh, it's not, but it does sort of have the look of what could be a, uh, the look of what could be a copper vein. Now a copper vein would help us a lot uh, in some ways. In other ways it wouldn't, but in some ways it would. Uh, but unfortunately, again, that does not seem to be what that is. Uh, this seems to be a large cave that actually goes down. I did not really notice that before. Um, we'll mine out the edges though, kind of a funny scenario, like a big tube like this. Uh, really is an interesting bit of generation here. Definitely could be shriekers or anything down here, I have no idea. Um, but I'm guessing there isn't just because, um, in general it'd be kind of a rare chance. Shriekers are pretty uncommon in the deep dark actually, it might sound crazy, but it's true. Um, so you'll tend to find shriekers a lot less commonly, um, unless you're in the actual ancient city itself. Anyway, we're gonna go up here. We don't really have any blocks to do it with, so we're gonna have to mine up here, which is kind of funny. And our tool is almost healed. We're getting there for sure. I think we're almost to the top here, and we are. So we're just gonna mine out the last few blocks with our hoe there. Get ourselves again fully sort of healed up on all the tools. I'm sure Elytra is healed too. It definitely is. Uh, so we'll do that. And we can just get the rest of this XP here to finish up those mending uh, operations there. And this is so close. See, it looks like it's been almost healed forever. But I think what it is, is it just kind of stays on that last one for a while. And there we go. We'll switch it out there for this for a second. Get ourselves some more durability. And there is that as well. All right, so we're going to head back up. This cave is definitely looking very mined out. Uh, a lot less deep dark than it did before. Uh, sort of these veins tend to make it look still kind of weird. Um, but overall, fairly interesting cave. We might do a little fly around here, actually. Oh, there's some shriekers. 
I think actually in the last stream we had a, a warden summon in, so you'll have to watch that stream to see it. Um, we're going to go this way and uh, go up the tunnel here. So to just fly all the way up here, you can't even really see how far up we're going because of that darkness effect. But once we get to the top here, we're going to eventually pop out the top and everything becomes bright and here we are at the top of this mountain on this world. Some people were asking for the seed. I do reveal it at certain points during streams in the past, but also on the announcements page of my Discord server, um, I do mention the seed of this world if you're wondering that. Now we need to see what we can get in terms of mending. I want to get mending on that sword of ours. So what we're going to do is we're going to basically get some things that we can very likely trade into, uh, uh, into emeralds. And then we can use that to, of course, get ourselves that mending book. So we'll get some different crops and things out of here. I think we have some crops over at the village anyway. And then as long as our uh, everything is good, we'll, we'll actually fly there because why not? So the village is basically straight north from our base, I believe anyway. We just have to go this way. There's kind of a little um, uh, hidden valley there. And then over here, there's also a second village. We're not going to that village. We are going to the main village. Yeah, there's this. There's that one right there, kind of in the taiga. And then this direction, it's going to lead us over to the plains village. And as someone says in the chat, it's definitely a good piece of advice. Let's see if we can get the stream to 500 likes at least. All right, so we have our sugarcane crop here. We also have lots of clay we can mine out, and here is the village. Let's start by seeing what we have in terms of emeralds and what we can use. This one is selling mending for 16 emeralds and a book. Now we could sell some of our crops to this villager right here, like our carrots, so we'll do that. Uh, just get ourselves that villager leveled up, but also, of course, the actual emeralds. We can sell paper to this villager here, so we could also use that. We'll put away these sort of other crops and things we have for now. We don't have a whole lot of emeralds, we're going to have to deal with that for a bit. However, we do have these glass panes, and I believe the glass panes can be sold to one of these villagers. I believe it's the other one. Um, so we're going to take a look for that in a second here. Uh, that might be over here. And this is actually a little pathway we made the last episode. We should probably get rid of it. Uh, but we did make this pathway on purpose. And that was to get a villager from this house over into our sort of villager area, which is nearby here. And we do have this uh, cleric as well. We've never traded with it though. So there's nothing high level in terms of enchantments unlocked. Uh, and this again is a different villager, which we, I guess we've traded with because it has the gray buckle or no, we, yeah, we did trade with it. I'm not sure why. Uh, Infinity isn't that good of an enchantment, so I'm not really sure why we saved that, but apparently we did. So we'll sleep here, and then we will probably get some clay to trade with those clerics to get ourselves the emeralds. Alright, so we have clay uh, over in the uh, river here, of course. Now, clay is the best thing to do if you do not have a good method of zombifying villagers for a while. So the trick is you want to go into the water, you want to just mine up some clay. Every single clay block will drop you for uh, four of the clay balls. And so of course, because of that, we can really, really simply here get ourselves tons of items we can trade with because 10 clay balls will give you an emerald, which means that literally only two and a half blocks of clay, which is of course like super easy to get, just two and a half blocks there will then give you a full emerald, so we can this way farm a whole bunch of this. Someone says, what is the best way to get nautilus shells and never find them in buried treasure? Well, they're not found in buried treasure. Nautilus shells are found two ways. They're found in the hands of drowned, and they're found from fishing. So ideally, an AFK fish farm is your best idea to find a ton of nautilus shells, you know, if you want like hundreds. If you just want enough for one beacon, you could always look around the uh, world for drowns, maybe at night in the oceans or in, you know, areas where they could spawn, like let's say dripstone aquifer caves. And again, look for them to be holding those nautilus shells. But overall, fishing and drown are your basically only two sources of that. We already have some of the clay balls. We're going to get a couple more and then we can go over and trade with them. We could also get some more sugar cane or we could let that crop grow a bit more. Either way, it's going to work fairly well. But it is kind of funny to look at our farm here and come sort of compare it to the farm that we had over on the mountain there. Kind of how like because the mountain's a more, you know, harsh climate or whatever, it's more difficult to actually just throw up a farm. We'd have to do things like getting our water laid out and even putting things in it so it doesn't freeze. All right, so over here should be those clerics. Our houses are here. We can see them. The cleric houses are the houses that have the terracotta on them like this. So like this would be a cleric and over here is a cleric. So let's see if there's one in the actual base. There is not. Um, there might be one over here. 
Uh, but again, if there isn't, they should be kind of out and about around the village in fairly easy to locate spaces. In fact, yeah, here they are. We'll just trade with them a ton of the clay balls for emeralds until they run out of the trade. Also giving us a ton of levels. We could have actually mended some of our tools and things this way if we wanted. Uh, and we'll go over here and trade with this villager as well. Get ourselves a whole ton of emeralds just by trading those clay balls for the emeralds. So hopefully they restock on there in a minute, but for now we can then get that mending book. Something we do need for now though is we do need to get bookshelves. So uh, none of these villagers seem to be selling bookshelves for now. We're going to keep taking a look. We might also have some books in here. Um, if we don't, then we can then basically uh, grab those in a second. So we do have seven lecterns. I'm not sure I made seven. I feel like that used most of the books that I did have. And of course, books are the things we need. So we'll probably have to find a source of books here in a minute. There may be a third librarian, I'm not sure. There are three of the lecterns there, so there could be, absolutely, um, but I'm not sure. So we'll go through that. It's always kind of funny how like with certain things you need to give them the book. You know, the book is the issue for them, it's not the 10 emeralds. Um, now we're actually going to uh, get ourselves some more clay for more emeralds over here. As those two villagers have restocked, we can just look for any real source of clay, even over here, like a small pond can sometimes get you some clay in Minecraft. Clay is kind of a very overlooked item. Uh, there's a lot of little items like that in the game where they sort of are not necessary for anything major, but they're kind of there and you can do little things with them. Like let's say clay, there's actually a lot of sort of hidden uses for clay, like turning it into terracotta, uh, like let's say getting it, you know, to be dried out. Um, or actually, well, you can get mud to be dried out into clay, and then of course using clay to trade with villagers for different things as well. This actually goes into an absolutely huge underwater cave, if you look at that. Really, really cool looking with those magma blocks and stuff, so maybe we'll explore that in a bit here. Uh, but for now, we just need to find some more of that clay. Uh, sort of the area where clay generates, it's like separated in two. So there's the lower area of a river where you do not have that mixture of sand, gravel, dirt, and clay. And there's that area that's higher up to the water where you do get that mix. And that mix is like right over here. Again, sort of those high up areas. Uh, that is where you're going to find these kind of circular patches of clay around your Minecraft worlds. The best source of clay is 100% though in the lush caves. Lush caves have like literal hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of clay blocks. Um, just because of the way they generate, it really did take clay from an item that's actually not incredibly um, sort of common into something that is now very very easy to get someone says they started playing minecraft two weeks ago um well it's always great to have new players and hopefully my videos on the game will help and it's actually crazy to me how some people have only been playing for two years but also how some people have been playing since the game almost first came out although something i do find funny is oftentimes um, i'll ask people how long they played the game and they'll say they played it for like 12 years or something um but it's actually funny sometimes i've had comments on my community posts where people will claim to have played the game for longer than the game existed uh so of course minecraft came out in i believe may of 20 uh or 2009 and so because of that the longest you could in any sense have played the game is almost 14 years no not actually 14 but almost but i remember having someone in the chat saying they played the game for 14 years uh not in this this chat but in a uh, comment section a while ago and also someone saying they'd played the game for 16 years or 15 years i think what it could also be as well as of course you know just saying the wrong number is that Minecraft definitely is a game that's been around for a long time. If you consider most video games, you know, like any other video game that came out in, let's say, 2009, they just were not as popular then as they are now. I mean, Minecraft came out before the Wii U did, which is just crazy to think. I mean, the Wii U is now, of course, an old system. And, uh, you know, just absolutely insane to think of, like, how much has changed since Minecraft came out. And yet the fact that it is still an insanely, insanely popular game. And now in terms of clay balls as well, we have got ourselves a huge amount of that. Someone asks, am I streaming? I am definitely streaming. Um, <laughs> as of course I responded to your question there, and if I was not streaming, I couldn't have responded to your question. So we're going to do that. And we're going to go over here. Someone says they uh, like the clay ball trade to balance and turning into bricks. Um, that can be a good idea. You can sort of, yeah, like basically for free turn clay balls into clay bricks um, with the villagers here, except for, of course, sort of the cost of the... Um, well, you know, it is free, yeah, because it's that to that directly. So that is kind of a cool thing about the mason is you can instantly turn clay balls into bricks. But the great thing is you can discount this trade to then basically get like free clay bricks. That actually leveled up perfectly for us. So we can get more of this. I'll go over here to this villager. 
and also trade with it a bunch to get ourselves our level up really, really high. And uh, yeah, we can use that. Let's see here. So we have this villager. Now this cartographer, this is the one that spies those glass panes, which is perfect. I wonder if there's a book trade we can get from one of these villagers. We do need to get ourselves some books. So we could look for leather. We could look around for cows, actually. That could work if we take a little fly around. Just looking for any random cows. We could even technically get it from horses. But, you know, I'm not um, a complete Minecraft monster, so we're going to go over here. And uh, we'll go over like this. That is a very weird cave generation, by the way. We'll get this cow as well with looting. We're getting a ton of the leather. We have uh, one leather there and three from this one, so not an amazing drop rate, but definitely decent. Uh, and we'll go over here and get ourselves that. And there's also one other cow here. Sort of the trick in Minecraft is the balance between just getting mobs and then actually saving them for other farms in the future. Because sometimes it's like, oh, it doesn't matter, they'll just respawn. But actually the way that mob farming works in Minecraft, sometimes they don't respawn. And sometimes it's kind of difficult to get yourself a bunch of these mobs again. And so because of that, if over, let's say, you know, a couple hundred days of playing in a Minecraft world, you just go out and kill hundreds and hundreds of mobs around. You can oftentimes go through the surrounding biomes and there will be literally no mobs, or very, very few, maybe like a couple, you know, rabbits or something. Or we now have 13 leather, which is definitely enough. We're going to go back this way to the village, which I believe is just over here. We can then craft those into books, and with the books, we can then get those mending books. And we already have over a stack of emeralds, in fact, a stack and a half of emeralds, mostly thanks to that great clay trade, and of course over here as well. We can break that sugar cane, craft it into paper, craft ourselves some books. Someone says melons can be good trades with villagers. They absolutely can. Another really good trade with villagers is pumpkins. In fact, the pumpkin and melon trades have historically been my favorite trade with villagers. And are definitely one of the best trades with villagers that there are. The only issue with the pumpkin and melon trades is that although they're really, really good early game, late game, certain things like stone are just so easy to get, um, it's sort of hard to compete. But the great thing about the pumpkins and melons too is of course the fact that you can actually farm those and fully automatically. Now, I have a really great pumpkin and melon farm that I've used before. Um, and honestly, the standard pumpkin and melon farm design that's automatic works pretty well. So even just something like that, throwing one of those up in your world, you know, maybe it's an hour of effort, maybe two hours, giving yourself an infinite source of great trades is always good. And because those farmer villagers have the pumpkin and melon trades, you know, it's two trades, not just one, you tend to not have issues with restocking as much, where basically you can trade with those villagers more and get more out of them. Now here's like all the villagers congregating at the center here, which is always interesting. You can actually get a couple more emeralds this way. Uh, there is this random librarian. This one we have not treated with. Um, this is the infinity one. See, I, I thought it had experience on its bar here, so maybe we actually haven't traded with that one before. I could have sworn I saw some XP on its bar there, but anyway. We've got some of these mending books now. We have four of them, and we have uh, one more. So we need a couple more emeralds. If we get some more clay, like there could even be some like right here. Although there isn't, because of course we've cleared it out. Um, we could actually use that to get a couple more emeralds, to get a couple more books. But it is getting near nighttime, and of course, you know, without the village being spawn-proofed here, we have to be careful, because we don't want to have an issue where that, those villagers actually die. So we'll go over here, get ourselves those clay balls, and then of course sleep, as of course we do not want anything bad to happen with zombies or whatever. Uh, and just because of that purpose, we actually have a bed right over here. I'm going to go over here, and again, thank you to everyone in the chat for all the great messages and stuff. Someone says, why can't you make an AFK platform for cows like for Hogland Farms? Uh, just because of the way the game works, and sort of the way they spawn into the game. It's not really, um, it doesn't really function that way. Um, but of course, with something like Hoglands as well, um, Hoglands are kind of spawned in like a hostile mob. And hostile mob and passive mob spawning is entirely different. So just it's completely different game mechanics. But sort of by that method, you can actually um, tell if a farm is farming hostile mobs or passive mobs by how it's AFK'd at. It just that's not very useful because it, you know, there's a lot of ways of telling if something is a hostile mob farm or a passive mob farm. Um, but unfortunately, that method is just not possible the same way with passive mobs. Now we're over here. We now have six mending books, which I think is great. Um, that's enough for basically everything we have that doesn't have it already. We also have 35 levels, which is also a really cool thing. So we're going to put these away. Um, just going to keep them in here for now. We might need them 
later. Uh, and I think that's good. And then we'll basically fly back over and we can get ourselves our tools even more mended up and uh, also able to be mended when the mending enchantment. Jason Park, uh, Jake, Jason Park asks, what's your favorite mob? My favorite mob, uh, Hmm, that's a good question. I'm not sure exactly what it is. One mob I really enjoy is the brown mushroom. I think it's a super overlooked mob and also one that is incredibly overpowered with some great abilities to it. Um, but I'd probably say maybe the brown mushroom. The Alea is also quite a cool mob. In terms of my favorite pet, I'd say my favorite pet in Minecraft is definitely the wolf. Um, just because it's actually like incredibly useful and gives you a lot of things you can do with it. All right, so we're going to go back here, get ourselves the enchantments on here. But first, we're going to do some base enchantments, as of course, that's generally the best idea. Work yourself down below 30 levels, then do those anvil combinations. So we're going to go over here and put those together. We have the boots. We also have the uh, lapis somewhere here. I think we have it in one of these shulker boxes. There we go. And we'll put those in the enchanting table. Depth Strider 3, not really what we want. Uh, let's see if there's something else we can do. Uh, to enchant it. Uh, we'll do some books, I think. So we'll grab out our books. What's the book offering? It's Loyalty 3. Uh, not really something we need right now, but we may as well grab it. Uh, now for this, Protection 3, also not what we need. Uh, we will do a another book enchant. Let's see what we get. Uh, could be something good. Might not be, though. And that is Efficiency 3, definitely not good. We'll put that at level 1, work that down. Blast Protection 4, uh, not really what we want again. Let's see if the book is any good. It's kind of a good trick is to look through most things, see if there's anything good being offered. If not, level one enchantment, continue on. Fire protection three or fire protection three. That's interesting. It's actually, is that the same on both? That might actually be. That is funny. It is the same on both. So that's our level 30 enchantment. Again, not really something we need. Uh, so I guess we'll just uh, not be able to do that. So we'll put that in here. I may as well enchant the boots though, see if something else goes on there, like let's say Feather Falling 4, let's see if we got lucky. Ah, uh, no, we did not, so we'll have to disenchant that later. We may as well honestly disenchant that now, we don't really need that. So we'll put that in there, put that away around with these other random enchanted books. And even like these other books in here are not that useful to us right now. What is useful is these mending books, and I actually just realized we have more mending books inside this chest. So we did not have to get those other mending books at all, we literally had them already inside this chest. So that sort of um, teaches me a good lesson for not having my organization great. Uh, but anyway, we do now have the mending, we can put that on the rest of our stuff, like let's say these boots could use it, we'll throw that on the boots. Uh, very, very cheap actually to add stuff like that onto tools if you haven't done it before. Um, for this sword, we'll put it on there as well, again just three levels. And let's say even for the shovel, we'll throw it on here. We'll just throw it on most things we have here, honestly. This uh, axe actually isn't very good, so we won't throw it on there. Uh, this is almost a perfect diamond hoe. We have silk touch, unbreaking three, efficiency five. So we'll add mending to that as well. So we have that and we have that as well. So let's see here. Uh, in terms of that, again, that's this is not mending. We'll throw mending on the helmet. And we'll get that. There we go. Just, again, super cheap to enchant this. Just two levels. Uh, that is mending. That is so all of our armor is mending. Uh, basically all of our tools except for that axe are mending. And the hoe is mending. We may as well add mending onto that axe, honestly, too. And now literally every single thing we have that's important is mending, which is really cool. In fact, we could even make this uh, fortune hoe also be mending. And we may as well rename it as well. Because then we rename it, we actually have the ability to kind of tell uh, what kind of hoe it is. So if you have two sets of tools, and of course you generally would, so you'd have your fortune set and your silk touch set, you can actually tell which type is which by renaming it. So we'll uh, rename this one right here, silk touch hoe. And we have the silk one and the fortune one, both perfect enchantments. So when we're going through our tools like this on our tooltip bar there, we can kind of see what kind of enchantments are on there, which is always a super good idea because it does give you the ability to then see what tool is in your hand, which of course, you know, I've had the issues where I haven't done that. I've broken something with the wrong type of tool and you definitely have quite issues. All right, we're going to now head back to our sort of project area and take a look at what we can do over there in terms of clearing more things out. Uh, but yeah, we basically upgraded a lot of our stuff, gotten some netherite, which is awesome. Let's take a look over at this project here. Someone says they want me to do a stream of surviving on Skyblock. 
I'm not sure if I would do a stream on that or not, just because a lot of parts of Skyblock can be sort of very boring and take a lot of hours to do, but still could definitely be interesting. Uh, something I'm also thinking I might do in the future, here's sort of a sneak peek for anyone who's gotten to this point in the stream or who is watching the replay, is I might in the future make a stream series where I do a survival island challenge. This is actually kind of similar to Skyblock in a way, uh, but could definitely be a fun thing to do. The only problem with challenges like that, to be honest, is the fact that it's actually really difficult to find survival island seeds in Minecraft 1.18 and onwards, just because the seed mechanics have been changed so much. It's definitely not impossible in any way. It just is a lot more rare, and it's something you don't find as often. But either way, we're going to dig out some of the stone here, and again, feel free in the chat, leave any messages you want, ask any questions you want about Minecraft. I will definitely try my best to answer them. I'm going to go this way. Someone says, will I ever start a hardcore series? Uh, there's definitely a chance of that. I have nothing against starting a hardcore series. Uh, so there's no reason to believe you might not see something like that in the future. And we're doing to do that. And I think, actually, if we combine through these, we're going to head out on the other side, and we're going to kind of cut out this area in strips, so you can sort of see what we're working on. That chicken just fell down, it like peeked its head over the edge, and just fell down into this big area we're digging. Lucky for that chicken, we're actually going to be mining this whole area out, so it's not going to be trapped in this big gorge forever. It'll be able to get out eventually too, as it sort of seems to be kind of following us to the exit there, which is funny. And uh, we'll keep going this way. Then we now have, that's actually a beautiful view, two of those mountains. Even though there's not a lot of giant jungle trees, absolutely a beautiful jungle there. We can kind of see through this area. Someone says, what is my favorite music disc? It is the music disc weight. Fun bit of trivia about the music disc weight. It used to be known as Where Are We Now? That was the name of the music disc weight in a long time ago. I heard a chicken lay an egg, but I don't think it was that chicken, actually. We're going to kind of block this up, get ourselves this to sort of the right level. Uh, as again, this is kind of the level we want it at. This whole area is going to kind of get mined out. We can even mine out this little corner here to start off with, why not? Let me go over here. And someone says, what are we doing today? Well, the first part of the stream was leveling up all of our tools, which we did do somewhat here, as well as that we got some netherite and explored the nether somewhat. Now for the second part of the stream, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be working on getting rid of the stone, but also I'm going to try answering as many questions as people have in the chat there, and also probably work on preparing our base a bit more, getting things ready for our eventual mega base that is going to be over here in the future. And it's great having these huge amounts of uh, different blocks to mine with. Then we can use those um, and also, you know, build with all these different uh, stone blocks here. And go this way. Now someone says, um, how do you plan or do I plan to cover uh, sub tick mechanics? Well, a lot of the very technical parts of Minecraft are something that are definitely difficult to know whether they should be covered or not. Because one of the issues, of course, with that is the fact that for most players, it's not incredibly useful information. Honestly, the biggest issue I have with bedrock related videos too is they don't relate to the majority of my audience. But again, I don't think there's anything saying that I wouldn't necessarily make a video in the future covering more niche topics, just probably not something you'd see incredibly frequently. But we're going to go over here to get that effect again. We have to kind of go in and out of that effect range, which is always annoying, but just sort of what has to happen if we do not have a second beacon or if we do not move the beacon, which we're not going to do because it's kind of annoying. We're going to go over this way and mine it out and trying to get this. Someone says, "Do they? Do we, uh, does anyone know what difficulty this is? Well, the difficulty of this world is in hard mode. You can see that right there, options, difficulty, hard. We could lock this. I never recommend locking difficulty though. It's always a terrible idea. Um, I've not even seen people really do that forever as well either. I think it was like kind of a old mechanic as sort of that locking difficulty. Um, as like I said, I just, I've not really seen that even done or even talked about that much. As it does seem like kind of a weird mechanic, like just permanently uh, forcing yourself to be in a certain difficulty and of course you know removing options is never really a good idea so we're gonna go over here and throw this last little bit of stone and we can see a beautiful sunset here actually from the top of this mountain we're kind of mining at the top of just to get ourselves a flat plateau to build on top of and again like i said earlier in the stream this was not like a huge tall mountain like this or like that this mountain was actually fairly short already we're just trying to make it even flatter so we have a good place to build on top of 
I hope we have a bed here actually because we have a ton of mobs that spawned here last time. In fact, something funny, after the last stream started, or the last stream ended, I forgot to actually pause the game, and so basically I went back onto the game after a while and was getting shot by a skeleton, and so I basically had to dig myself into the wall, in fact you can probably see it. Yeah, over here I dug myself into the wall and kind of blocked it up like this, and then when I logged back on I was like, where am I? Why is my health so low? And I came out here when I was preparing for the stream today. I basically had to run for my life with only like three hearts because there was like a skeleton that was trying to kill me there. So sort of a funny off stream moment there of the series. Right, we're going to start clearing all this some more as well. Someone says, could I ever have a multiplayer series? I definitely could. Um, I have uh, thought about that before. I used to be sort of more interested in that idea. I'm not sure we'll see what happens in the future. Um, but there's definitely a possibility. And of course, if I'm invited to some sort of famous multiplayer server, uh, then that would obviously become a more, much more viable option or something. Um, but yeah, in general, is definitely something you might see in the future. Um, but not necessarily a specific plan. And I definitely want to do it with different YouTubers. So if there's ever, you know, some other famous Minecraft YouTubers that want to do a uh, stream with me, or not a stream, but like a series. Um, that could actually be a really cool idea for sure. Um, but we'll obviously see what happens. I'm going to go over this way. Someone says, what am I doing? Again, we're just trying to kind of clear out this area to eventually make space for a mega base. And in the process as well, getting ourselves a ton of different materials that we can use to eventually build not only the mega base, but also to build the... Th to trade with villagers and even by some certain certain sub mechanics to actually barter with piglins and go through all these other stages of the game as well. So you know just getting something as basic as stone and huge amounts of it can be incredibly useful. Someone says they want to see me invited to the Dream SMP if it still exists. Yeah, I have no idea what's going on with the Dream SMP right now. I haven't heard, like, anything about it forever. Um, but to be honest, like, I'm even wondering what's going on with Hermitcraft. I'm sure there's a lot of Hermitcraft fans that watch my videos. Um, just based on what YouTube tells me in the analytics, that seems to be the case. But I do wonder why Mumbo Jumbo hasn't returned to Hermitcraft. It does... I do kind of wonder about that, because it's like, you know, that was like the main thing he made videos on, although he's kind of been posting videos now. As far as I remember, I have not seen any videos from him yet that have been on Hermitcraft, so I'm not sure what's going on with that or not. And even, of course, with the whole sort of Hermitcraft and Empire's SMP thing that was going on there. I don't know a whole lot about it, but it is kind of some interesting decisions being made by them there, so I guess we'll see what happens to that in the future. And we'll see what happens as well. Now we're going to go over here and get ourselves uh, basically these uh, stone that are just sitting on the ground. A lot of people would just let the stone sit there and eventually disappear. Um, but for me, I would tend to just like picking up all the items. Someone asks any recommendations for FPS. They have, uh, or for uh, settings, they have horrible FPS. Um, probably the biggest thing is to make sure that your entity distance, that's right here, entity distance is no larger than 100%. Having a really high entity distance is something that will cause a huge amount of lag. And I've actually had an issue on the stream before where my entity distance was at like, I think 400%. And so because of that, the frame rate was really low for the first bit. Another important thing is that if you don't have an insanely good computer, do not have a higher render distance setting than probably about 20 chunks. And ideally, if you're working with like combat or something and you just want the high FPS, to do something like maybe 10 chunk or 12 chunk render distance because you're just going to optimize that fps mostly and also you know things like optifine or sodium these sort of performance mods are really the best tools you have to raise your fps overall well i've not actually found that they help me too much i'm not sure if that's because of my pc setup or just how it works um but in general those can also improve it somewhat so we have that and they also are kind of like able to run shaders there's a lot of benefits to getting those uh, maybe something i might actually do in the future is make a video kind of on those different fps mods and different things you can do to use those to get even more out of your sort of minecraft experience um and yeah we basically have that our inventory again is getting basically full instantly it's crazy how many different items we're able to get so quickly and it's a lot of it's honestly thanks to that pickaxe we got by upgrading it earlier which is quite a good thing so we're going to go this way, so we're going to go over here. Now, 
Some, someone asked me, do I know any history or stories of 2B2T? Um, none more than you might just see on YouTube. I've never actually played on 2B2T before. I have played on a couple Anarchy servers before, uh, but not too frequently. Although I do know there's a, a lot of sort of Anarchy server-related Minecraft channels. It's actually crazy how many channels have gotten super famous. Like, let's say, of course, the biggest one being FitMC, but also ones like SalC1. Um, that a lot of their content is just based on 2B2T, which is quite interesting. Um, but yeah, it is a really cool server, and there are some things I've read about it which are really interesting. Um, I might want to play on it someday, just the massively long waiting times are something that I'm not incredibly interested about, to be honest. Um, but yeah, it is, it is definitely an interesting server for sure. Someone says, what enchantments am I using on the pickaxe? So the reason why I can go through the stone this quickly is because I have the haste 2 beacon. We did get that haste 2 beacon earlier on in the stream, and so that's what's giving us the ability to mine through this stone so quickly. However, you can only do that if you're doing it in combination with a really good pickaxe. And for a really good pickaxe, it has perfect enchantments. So it has efficiency 5, silk touch, and breaking 3, and mending on a netherite diamond pickaxe that's also renamed. That's obviously the biggest trick when doing that kind of thing. Thing, is to basically have the best enchantments also to do the best movement as you can see here we're kind of doing like sweeping motions with our pickaxe that is going to give us the biggest amount of block breakage just by doing that someone says how do i transfer all the different stone into the chest at once um it's pretty simple all you want to do and i'll actually uh, show this in a second here once i collect all the stone but it's a simple trick and people were asking me about this before there's a lot of really cool little tricks like this you can do in minecraft that definitely speed up things quite a bit so we're going to grab the rest of these stone blocks before they all despawn. As again, smooth stone is definitely something you do not want to waste. It's kind of funny, I'm kind of used to calling the smooth stone and the normal cobblestone stone. But now because there is the full smooth stone block, and there has been for a very long time, that's not even really how it works anymore, as smooth stone is actually the smelted stone and not this. But anyway, we're going to go over here and get the rest of these uh, sort of random blocks sitting around here, making sure none of them despawn and kind of mining through here in a more organized way. It can often be one of the best ways of not having those blocks just disappear, uh, as every single block and sort of any item on the ground when it's sitting there will despawn in 5 minutes, except for the nether star. The nether star will actually sit there for 10 minutes before despawning, and in bedrock edition it'll be there permanently before despawning, so it never despawns. So that's still such an interesting thing about bedrock edition. The nether star will never despawn. But anyway, how I put those items quickly in a chest, it's pretty simple. What you want to do is basically shift and double click on an item with another item in your hand, so like this, and that just puts them all in there. So all the items of this type, let's say all the iron ingots would go in here. We spread out this coal like this, you can see have any item in your hand just sort of currently on the cursor, then shift, double click on there, it quick transfers all of those from one area to the other, so we can super quickly grab all those things and just filling up all of our inventory slots. So that's kind of the trick for doing that, and definitely a very good shortcut to use. Now, someone says, can I see the time each person watches your YouTube videos? Um, I cannot see the individual view duration, but I do have sort of an analytic of average view duration. So, for instance, stream average view duration tends to be about 10 minutes. If you watch this stream for about 10 minutes, then you'd be exactly the average. However, in reality, it tends to be mostly people joining for about 20 seconds. And then also people who join on for like two hours. And so they kind of will even out each other into that. And we have that. Someone also asks, how long do I typically stream for? I tend to stream for about three hours, and so I just found it's a good amount of time. I think my first stream was like about five hours, and that just did not work out very well for me. But yeah, generally a three hour stream is best, and it does go from 9 a.m. to noon PST, or from noon to 3 p.m. EST, and we have that. And uh, yeah, more or less, um, it tends to be just kind of playing through survival Minecraft and sort of experiencing the game as anyone else would, which of course includes a lot of grinding and things that you would normally not see on, let's say, a Let's Play. But I try and have at every stage of what I'm doing there to be interesting information to talk about. Like, for instance, when mining the stone right here, just the fact of how kind of waving the mouse up and down like this is really the best idea. Here's actually something really cool a lot of people probably did not know about, and you'll be kind of uh, awestruck by this. So this is a completely vanilla feature I'm about to show off. Press escape, go to options, go to controls. Go to keybinds up here, top right. And you want to scroll down all the way down here, and eventually you'll get right here to the 
uh, it's right over here, it's the miscellaneous screen. And right here is something that says toggle cinematic camera. And it says not bound, that's by default. You wanna click that and press any key on your keyboard that's not being used so far. Let's say is T being used, it is. As let's say Z being used, it is. Is V being used, it is. Is B being used, it is. Is N, is M, is three. It is, it looks like most of our keys are being used. Is I being used, is O being used. Looks like all of them are being used, honestly. Uh, but let's just say we'll use um, on this dot right here. There we go. Now it's toggled to a key. And if we go back here, we now have the ability to enable cinematic camera. Again, this is not with cheats on. This is just a base feature. Normally, if I move around my mouse and sort of like look around, it just moves with my mouse. If I press that button, something has changed. It's now as if my camera is basically on like what would be like a movie camera sort of axle. And so basically what happens is we move like this. We kind of have this really interesting smooth movement like this, and we can kind of look around really strangely. This is how I make those outros of my videos, is I'll basically put my FOV up, I'll look at an object, turn off um, my UI by pressing F1, and just kind of go like this. So we're looking at something far away, it has like this really weird look of sort of having like an actual camera looking at something and we can kind of go like this to make these more cinematic looking camera shots. Now of course a lot of that is depending on the FOV as well, but overall just very weird playing with this because as well as that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to move my mouse sharply to the left and then I'll stop. Okay, I've now stopped moving my mouse, but the camera is still moving. That's kind of how cinematic camera works. It's as if with real things, once you start moving them, they take a while to slow down. So because of that, it's actually really difficult to move around with this. And let's say when we're mining out the stone here, it also does not work very well because if we're, let's say, trying to break this, it's really hard to move this uh, mouse in time because you can see here, it just does not like moving the direction. So it's a super strange thing, the cinematic camera. Again, I'm sure some people knew about that, but not an incredibly well known feature and it is one that is fully vanilla so we'll just actually take that off by pressing the button again on our keyboard there we go it's off it's so easy to see the difference between it being off and on it's like crazy night and day difference but anyway definitely interesting little feature and we're gonna go over here and keep mining us out it looks like it has now become night again so we'll have to go over here and sleep we do not want any hostile mobs or creepers trying to kill us as we're just mining out this mountain here and we'll do that. It's always kind of cool, the sunsets of Minecraft, something very beautiful. I remember when I first started playing the game, I always loved taking screenshots of the sunsets. Um, but of course, now at this stage in the game, they're not uh, incredibly interesting, but still kind of cool to look at. And we have that. Also, something I was thinking about, and I'm not sure, is, you know, when I was not a YouTuber, I remember watching IBX Toy Cat. I'm sure a lot of people are aware of IBX Toy Cat. And a series that he did was something where he'd basically look at different people's Minecraft realms. I remember thinking, oh, I wonder if, if I ever become a YouTuber, if my realms invite page will be flooded. But I don't think anyone's actually thought of that, because I don't think I've gained any realms invites, um, except for on Bedrock I got one. So as a funny thing, uh, if you have a Minecraft realm, feel free to invite me to, to that. And We'll see if I ever join it. I'm not sure if I will. I saw it'd be kind of funny to see how many people actually invite me to their Minecraft realm or not. But I think the honest thing is too is a lot of people don't have Minecraft realms. Most players do play single player or they'll play on a Minecraft server. Realms itself is kind of a you know not incredibly commonly used service from Mojang. And so because of that, I'm not actually sure how many people use the realms or not. But either way, it is definitely interesting. And yeah, sort of interesting series. I was thinking I might do something like that if I do get enough realms invites. It's sort of like, you know, teaching people how to play the game sort of in realms or something. Might be interesting kind of just, you know, seeing different things that people have built. And maybe trying to, you know, I don't know, like just sort of look at different tips and tricks that they've been using. Or even just little interesting ways that people play in their Minecraft worlds. But anyway, we're going to keep breaking all these blocks and kind of getting this cleared out. Our tool is now about two-thirds broken. But if we fly up, we can get a great look at our progress so far this mountain is so close to being mined out all the way you can see just a bit of stone there a bit there a bit there and then it's done uh, i've actually forgot or i didn't even notice how kind of close to the edge this bit of stone was right here so we'll mine that out as well and get ourselves that all linked up but we are again out of inventory room we'll put that back and do that we'll go over here and we'll put that in the uh chests we have now this whole base is starting to kind of come together and not in terms of the base but in terms of sort of the preparation for it i think the biggest issue we're gonna have to kind of deal with is what the main sort of design of the base is going to be we've actually now run out of uh chests to put items in so we're gonna have to get out some more chests uh, i don't know why i took my boots off there kind of random and then we'll put those over here 
but the next time we're full of stone there, we need to come back and actually uh, make ourselves some more chests. And we'll go this way. Now, someone says, what is this project? It is basically making a big mega base on a mountain. But for now, we're going to start by kind of clearing out the area and getting ourselves a good kind of plateau to build on top of. As of course, you know, any good build project, you need sort of an area we can build. So we're going to break some more of this. Probably stop actually at this little section here because we've kind of run out of inventory room. We're going to have to get a better solution to that before we mine too much more of this. And we'll go over here. And we can then put that away. It's actually raining as well, which is interesting. So we'll go over here. We can kind of also grab that. And it's kind of funny because I think um, if we kind of, you kind of notice here. So if we're jumping as we break the blocks, they're actually not instant mining. And it's kind of interesting little thing because when we're jumping there, it does give it the effect of not breaking as quickly. So it's so funny how there's little things in Minecraft like that you wouldn't really notice before. But sometimes if you're really paying attention, some very interesting effects like that, sort of the non-instantly mining stone. And someone says, how much time have I spent on this world? I have spent basically as much as the streams are. So if you want to look back through all the streams, you can see literally, well not literally, but basically every single minute of this server. And we have a super chat from Evergreen Goddess saying thank you for the wonderful Saturday morning entertainment for me and my family. Looking forward to the next one and seeing where you use the Gilded Blackstone in the future. Well, I definitely do want to do something with the Gilded Blackstone. It's quite a cool block. And thank you so much for the super chat. I really appreciate it. Uh, and I'm glad that you enjoy these streams for sure. Alright, we're going to fly back to our main base, or sort of our old base. Which is going to be a little bit more snowy, a little bit less rainy. Hopefully, anyway. And uh, from there, we can kind of take a look at what we have in terms of items. And I think it's actually probably a good idea to start clearing up that massive shulker box mess we have. As well as that, probably also good to make something out of this dragon egg here. This is our current incredibly terrible dragon egg display. Literally a dragon egg on nine pieces of uh, endstone there, so not ideal. And we're going to have to go over here and deal with some of that. But either way, we have inside these chests, of course, all the netherite from our mining previously. And our inventory is pretty empty, so this makes it a decently good opportunity to actually sort our items. We'll start by kind of isolating the items we don't want to move in one corner of our inventory. That's always the best first idea, or sort of the best thing to do first. And then after that, we can look through here and grab all items of a certain type. So for us, it's going to be iron uh, armor. In fact, mostly iron leggings just because of the type of chest that these were obtained from. So we can grab all those. Also take that goat horn and put it up in a second here, or at least put it next to the other one. We'll put it in the valuables chest, I guess could work. And then we have all these leggings. We'll put those into this chest and we'll put those ones over here. Now we have over here some more lapis that can go inside of the enchanting chest. Also all these potions, we can use those and take all these potions and put them in the brewing area. We actually have a ton of potions because a lot of these are things you'll find inside of the ancient city, which we did raid I think about two episodes ago here. And it looks like we lost, we kind of missed some other items in a chest. So we'll grab that and we'll go through here. And we're also going to grab the rest of these items as well. So we'll grab those, and we'll grab the bottle of enchanting, as well as potions of regeneration. Alright, so there goes most of those potions. There's a couple more in here. We actually have round of inventory room. We're going to have to throw these iron leggings in here. And then grab the rest of them out of here. And sort of just cycle these around here to get ourselves inventory room for that. So we'll have to grab some of the steep slate stone and put that probably just in one of these chests uh, more randomly. Then we can put these in here. I'm going to go like that. Someone says, how do you make potions? Potions are made with bottles of water. Bottles of water are crafted with uh, three glass. You put them inside of a brewing stand, which... Um, are made with the blaze rods. I actually do have a brewing guide I made a little while ago too. If you want a ton of information on brewing, that's definitely the best place to find that info. But overall, most potions are started with a piece of nether wart. Then other items are added to it, and finally modifiers are added. So for instance, fire resistance is nether wart, then magma cream, then nether, then a uh, redstone dust being added inside of a brewing stand. 
All right, so we'll put that in there. We'll put the lapis inside of the enchanting little corner here, just like this. Again, lots of this is temporary. Eventually, I'm hoping we'll have an absolutely huge base that we can do things on around here. Now, I think what we're going to do as well is basically take a look at uh, what we have in terms of items, just a kind of random stuff like the stone here. These sort of things are obviously not valuables. And also because they're generally small stacks, we can get them all to be kind of combined and then not have an issue with running out of inventory room with that. So inside of here is most of that. We'll just throw that in here for now. We can kind of try and sort that as best as we can. Again, just putting those away in there. Also things like music discs, pretty easy to sort out and to get a good inventory of that. We have some other side discs, which is pretty good, and also 13, as well as cat discs. Someone says, what way would you suggest to repopulate a village if all the villagers died? Well, if literally every single villager in the village died, your best option is to probably get zombie villagers that just spawn naturally at night to cure them and then to kind of breed those to get yourself more of the villagers. However, if there's even two villagers left, of course, the trick would be put down a ton of beds throughout the village and give those villagers a lot of bread themselves. So bread and beds will make the villagers breed. Another thing you can do as well to stop them from, let's say, dying in the future is to make sure to surround a village in a wall. And as well as surrounding it in a wall, another really good trick is to make sure that the entire village is lit up. Even if there's not a wall around it, just having that lighting will help so that mobs do not spawn directly inside the village. And even just getting some more iron golems around can also help quite a bit. So here's our insane amount of music discs we have, and most of these are honestly from just the ancient city raiding. Crazy how much you can get just from that. And even here, like these five stacks of candles, also basically just from the ancient city raiding. All right, so we're going to grab the items from here. Uh, most of these chests are almost empty, honestly. So we'll just, again, keep grabbing kind of the stone-related items. Those sorts of things are going to be what work the best in terms of just kind of stacking up and really easy to grab and also sort and put in other chests. So we're going to grab this here. We even have one piece of netherite here. We could put the netherite in this chest. But we can't actually because it's completely full of netherrack. So we'll honestly just take this netherrack and unfortunately throw it away and let that despawn. Although it does kind of bug me. Um, there's nothing really else we can do in terms of that because we just have too many items in general. So we'll put this in here. That doesn't really resolve much inventory space actually. Uh, but overall make sure all those stone items are in our inventory not just sitting in chests. Like these ones up here. And this dirt there can grab that. And then we can grab this and this. And put those away in the actual stone items chest, which I believe is this one right here. So we'll put those in there, get that all filled up, and then we can grab two more double chests. And we'll put them over here, and we'll put some more of those stone items inside of there as well. And we kind of just start to grab the random items in here and consolidate them into less and less chests. That's always the best idea. Kind of start small and continue on from there. If we missed any items, we can put those in here. Like, let's say, putting this music disc inside of this chest here like that. Now someone says, have I killed a warden yet? I definitely have in Minecraft in general. In terms of this world, I believe we did kill a warden when we were doing the Ancient City raiding. If you want to check out that video, it is a clearly marked stream of being only about Ancient City raiding. And inside of there, we did kill a warden. So if you want to see me kill a warden on this world, I would definitely suggest checking out that stream. We also have a ton of mob drops, actually, that we got, of course, randomly throughout our adventures. So we'll put those away as well, as those are definitely something that are kind of taking up a lot of inventory room. But they're not actually that important overall to have on us right now, anyway. And we'll put away the extra stone here, uh, as well as, like, these items. And then over here we can put the... some of the treasure can go in here, I guess. So we'll put, like, the lodestone, I guess, actually, in the ores area, just because it's, you know, from netherite. Netherite is kind of like an ore. Not exactly, uh, but it is in a sense. So we'll grab those. We can put the string away there, the arrows away in there, and get that. Someone says, how do you get phantom membrane? There are two ways of getting phantom membrane inside of Minecraft. The first way is from the phantom, which of course makes the most sense. And so if you're getting phantom membrane from the phantom, you simply want to kill that phantom and you let that spawn by not sleeping for over three nights. Then on the fourth night, those phantoms will spawn. If you do not want to get it from the phantoms, you can also get cats. And there's a chance for cats to drop the phantom membrane. That's kind of the trick with cats to get the phantom membrane is to just sort of have a bunch of them so you increase your chances of getting the phantom membrane from any one 
from any one individual cat. So that's sort of the trick with that. These chests are getting fairly empty, which is definitely good. And we have a ton of diamond horse armor here as well. We'll put those away in this chest. Now we can kind of clear up all these empty elytra, or elytra, clear up all these empty shulker boxes anyway, and get ourselves a bunch more inventory room to then later on we can use that to of course know what chests actually have things in them and what one of them are already full. So we'll put away these shulker boxes just in this chest for now as we do know they're all empty. And even in these shulker boxes here, we'll clear out the items from them. Put them in here and then kind of get them all to be empty so we can hopefully empty out all of those shulker boxes and make all the items perfectly visible to us. That's another good trick is to not kind of let items just sit around. You want to make them in areas where it's really easy to see what's going on. And someone says they really love cats, especially how they protect you from creepers and phantoms. Cats are definitely a great part of Minecraft, and I think that they're also a very overlooked pet. Early on in the stream I was saying my favorite pet is the wolf in Minecraft. Well, that is probably true, the cat is also a close second, just because the cat just because the cat is actually incredibly useful and it gives you things like, let's say, protection from creepers. Another thing about cats, phantoms are scared of cats, it's true. So phantoms will actually basically run away from cats, just like they'd run away from creepers. And the reason why is pretty simple. If the cats are giving you phantom membranes sometimes after night, what does it mean? Well, it means the cats have been fighting those phantoms. And so although you never see it, the phantoms are aware of the fact that at night, those cats become dangerous carnivores, at least for the phantoms and the creepers. And so definitely an interesting fact about that. And the reason why creepers are afraid of cats, I have no idea. But it is still kind of an interesting fact that they are afraid of cats for sure. Alright, so inside these chests, some of the easiest items to pick out are usually woodcrafted items. Things you get and are crafted with wood. Now we don't have a lot of these here because we've kind of sorted this already. So we can put those away. But overall we still have a decent amount. So we'll, you know, clear that out somewhat more. As well as, of course, all the stone related items. 15 emerald ore, that's actually pretty good. Especially since they're the stone emerald ore. Um, deep slate would have been even better. But we don't really have a good source of that at all. So we get those items, we'll put that again in these chests, and if not in that chest, in this chest over here also. And the shulker box we can clear out, and then there's a lot of stuff in here actually, but we can clear that out and then get that to be another empty shulker uh, kind of on the ground there in the chest. And we'll put that in here. Someone says, do I have merch? I actually do have merch, but I haven't really done anything with it for a long time. So it's super basic, just kind of my logo on some different things. Um, but if you look up iCraftMC merch, I think there's a link to that. Uh, I'm not actually sure. I haven't really promoted it for a long time. Uh, maybe eventually I'll do sort of like a uh, actual, you know, sort of a big push into merch, get some more designs, sort of some new designs just for the merch. Uh, but for now, if you do want iCraftMC merch, I do believe there is some there. Um, on, I think, like a spread shop or something. Uh, there is a link somewhere on my channel, I just forget where it is. Um, but if you look up iCraftMC merch, there should be a link uh, to that shop there as one of the results. Alright, so we'll put the shulker box away in here. Again, kind of running out of space here. There's some more of those music discs we can put away. And we can get that to go into this uh, music disc chest we now have, because we have so many of these music discs. We had to have an entire chest for them just like that. And we have that. Now we're actually going to end the stream here, unfortunately, but I hope you enjoyed watching it. If you did, make sure to like it. Make sure to also not just leave my channel right now and go into something else. Watch another iCraft MC video. I guarantee you if you go to my home watch page, there are things on it right now if you've not watched and that you will enjoy. I hope you have a good rest of your Saturday and maybe any other day if you're watching this as the replay. And I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.